Hi, you're a blessing having chance upon Christocentric message because we have loads of content that is going to push you to your next level. You're about listening to another message by the man of God, Apostle Joshua Salma. Sit back as the Lord ministers to you. And if you're new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button. Don't forget to like our message and share abroad as well. Comment in that comment section. I'll see you again. Bye-bye. You be lifted above all other gods. We lay your crown. All glorious God say. King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, give him praise from the depth of your heart. Sabali Kaparos Kadibrianda, King of Kings, Majesty, we bless you. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. To you be all the praise. Someone bless him. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Jesus, we praise you. Jesus, we praise you. We worship you. Now ask him for an encounter this night. Give me an encounter even by your spirit. Give me an encounter even by your word. Give me an encounter by your spirit. Hallelujah. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit so that you don't confuse him with other spirits there are many spirits but he is that spirit and he says where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty you know he is that spirit because of what follows his presence the bible says if it is true that he is that spirit then you expect liberty hallelujah Every gathering by the Spirit of God is a feast of light. The Bible says that was the true light that lighted every man. If it is the true light, the benefit is to every man. That was the true light that lighted every man. Not some men. When it has to do with the administration of the light that comes from his word, it is for every man. The same Lord is rich unto all. That means you must expect an encounter with the light of God. That was the true light that lighted every man. There are false lights. They carry a semblance of liberty. They carry a semblance of knowledge. But they do not sustain the power to lift. Because you arise and shine if your true light comes. So if you claim to have received the light and you still remain there, you did not receive the true light. Light sustains the power to lift. Light sustains the power to drive away darkness. John 1, 5. The light shineth in darkness. 
and the darkness comprehended it not. Hallelujah. Yes. So if it is the true light, it sustains the power to lift. Spirit of the living God, we submit to your wisdom. We declare that outside of your help, we are only wasting our time. It is only in your light that we see light. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger. Shala so brandy give me. tonight by your spirit and let Jesus be glorified for in Jesus mighty name we pray God bless you please give Jesus a big hand clap and then you may be seated we bless the Lord for the privilege that he's given to us again the Bible says I was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the Lord. Many things happen in the house of the Lord. Among them is an encounter with the God of the Bible. I said, I think it was last week, there is no guarantee that you will always meet a man in his office. No, he comes and he leaves. There is no guarantee that you will find a man at a recreation center all the time. He comes and he leaves. But if you stay at a man's house and you are patient, eventually you will find him. Because the house of every man is his final resting place. So when he calls us his house, when he calls this place his house, then he covenants with himself that this shall be my house forever. Hallelujah. We appreciate all who are connecting from across the globe. May the Lord bless you. A global family, the Lord will do you good in Jesus' name. And for all who have come from across the world and are here present, may the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Just to honor a few people and then we'll get straight to the word. Hallelujah. We're honored again and happy to have His Majesty, the Olu of Wari, and His dear wife, Her Majesty. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma. And then... Dear man of God, Apostle Tommy, are me? Let's give him a big God bless you. Hallelujah. And honored and grateful to have Apostle Babs in our midst from Joss. God bless you. Thank you. Reverend Vindiolu from Enugu. See here. God bless you. And every man, woman of God here, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. We began discussing along the theme and the prophetic word that was given to us by God this year. That is a year of open doors. It says, I have set before you an open door and no man can shut it. You recall that we said doors usually come closed by default. And we must understand the spiritual dynamics that is allocated to the ministry of open doors. We did say that there are three ways to open doors according to scripture. Number one is by engaging the right keys. I'm doing a recap so that um, we follow along with our discussion for tonight. You need to have the right key to open doors. Number two, the second way the Bible describes that doors can be open 
is by the art of knocking. The Bible says in Matthew 7, from verse 7 and 8, it says, Knock, and it shall be opened. Verse 8 says, For everyone that knocketh, to him that knocketh, it says, It shall be opened. We said that knocking means that there is someone at the other side of the door who has the ability to open that door. And number three, by the ministry of the supernatural, as we find in the life of Paul and Silas. The Bible says they prayed, they sang, and there was an earthquake. And the Bible says when it came, no key was used, no knocking happened, but all doors opened. Hallelujah. And then we took our time to discuss exceeding great and precious promises as a way of buttressing on our understanding. We said keys in this kingdom represent light, knowledge, and that we must be able to know what is there for us in Christ. It says, whereby has he given to us this great and exceeding precious promises that by them, we might be the partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And then last week, we looked further into the subject of knocking by understanding the power of relationships. For you to knock means that you do not have the key, but you need the door opened. And you must be able to understand strategic relationships Otherwise, the door will not be opened. We examine the parable of Jesus buttressing or knocking and asking that there was a man who came to his friend by night and said, friend, please arise and give me three loaves. Another friend has come and I'm about to be embarrassed because I do not have supplies. And he says, sorry, you need to leave. It is late. I cannot wake up. And we did look at that scripture that under a certain condition, the friend woke up and gave him as many as he desired. Please do take out time to listen to these teachings. They are meant to give us light, true light indeed. Hallelujah. Tonight's teaching will bless you yet again, and I'm trusting that it will add to our knowledge and strengthen us in the spirit, giving us capacity to access open doors in the name of Jesus. It's a very interesting teaching tonight because now you will begin to learn how to manage doors that are opened. Um, it is one thing to contend to get doors opened, but if and when those doors are opened, it's important that we are equipped with the intelligence to know how to manage open doors and to know that which is expected if and when doors are open. So are you ready for tonight? Matthew chapter 6, please, deliver us from evil. I'm teaching tonight on the subject, deliver us from evil. As an attempt to help us understand the implication of open doors, it is one thing to desire that doors be opened, but there are prophetic implications if and when doors do open. And many believers are not equipped holistically to understand the prophetic implication of open doors. That every time doors are open unto a man in the spirit, doors are open unto a man across the cosmos. There are implications and we must be equipped to know what to do with the challenges that come as a result of open doors. Matthew chapter 6, please. Let's begin our reading from verse 5. We know this as the Lord's Prayer. When you read Luke's synoptic account, it was the disciples who came to Jesus and said, teach us to pray, they said, as John taught his disciples. That was not a subject of prayerlessness. I have taught you their, their request was accuracy in prayer. They were prayerful people, but they discerned and they discovered that their prayers did not produce results. There was something about the character and the structure of the prayers of Jesus. And they said, Jesus, we're tired of shadow boxing in the place of prayer. Teach us how to pray as John taught his disciples. So Jesus began to lay a few foundations about hypocrisy and so on and so forth. Now let's go to verse 6. 
Matthew chapter 6 from verse 6. It says, But when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to your Father which is in secret, and thy Father which is in secret shall reward you openly. Verse 7. Now, it says, When you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think they will be heard because of their much speaking. Verse be not therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. Verse 9. After this manner. Now pay attention. He didn't say by this recitation. He was showing a spiritual protocol to prayer. The recitation may be profitable, but the power is not in the chanting or the recitation. That this right here is a ladder that captured within it is a code that can help men accent realms of prayer are we together i'm not necessarily teaching on prayer but this is to lay a foundation and then we get to our subject he now says pray after this manner number one our father i've taught you again but let me recap our father means that when you approach god you must approach him with an understanding that he is abba the word abba means source sustainer protector defender that means if you approach god with a mindset of other alternatives your prayer is already corrupted you must approach him knowing that except and unless he helps you help cannot come from any other place are we together our father number two it says which art in heaven that means faith will be required in your approach to prayer because you are discussing with a spirit that is in a dimension that is not earthly are we together he is everywhere but which art in heaven and in as much as you are seated with christ but physically speaking at the point where the need is required is at this domain of his kingdom so you will need to understand the subject of faith number three hallowed be your name that you approach him with the spirit of reverence paying attention to the various dimensions that are captured in his office because one of the ways that we learn god are through his names the names of god represent the multifaceted dimensions of god that are captured in his names that you approach him with the spirit of reverence number 10 verse 10 now thy kingdom come notice that there are six points captured in jesus's prayer three have to do with god and three have to do with man for god it is hallowed be your name his name thy kingdom come thy will be done so his name his kingdom and his will and then when it has to do with man your daily bread the forgiveness of sins and then deliverance from evil are we together now six points captured in the prayers of jesus then he says let's go back to verse 12 please or 11 where did we stop so we continue from there give us 10 let's start afresh thy kingdom come he says and your kingdom only comes when your will is done in earth as it is in heaven remember everywhere the will of god is accurately executed his kingdom comes and the will of god is captured in his word as revealed by the spirit and as written in scripture are we together now that when the will of God finds expression, his kingdom comes within that sphere. He says, in earth, the first earth being you, the earthen vessel, and then your environment. Verse 11 now, it says, give us this day. It is amazing how Jesus is teaching that God is very meticulous. And he's not only concerned about your future, he's concerned about this day. The fatherly character of God is such that he does not just focus on the future alone every day matters to him he said give us this day our daily bread your bread means all that is necessary for your sufficiency as far as your kingdom adventure is concerned are we together wisdom is bread favor is bread relationships is bread he said give us this day that which is needed for my supplies for my sufficiency are we together verse 12 it says and forgive us our debts or trespasses as we forgive our debtors now verse 13 
it says lead us not into temptation i'm not teaching about the first part otherwise we would have a very serious discussion to do there because when you read this from the king james expression uh it seems to negate other aspects of scripture god does not lead people in temptation are we together the bible says and every man apostle james was teaching he says when he's tempted let him not say i was tempted of god for god does not tempt men with evil remember that every man is tempted according to his lust so he says lead us not into temptation he was talking about something entirely different that was not properly captured in the translation but here is my point of emphasis for tonight he says but deliver us from evil Jesus is teaching the people how to pray, that it should be captured within the context of your prayer, the prayer to be delivered from evil. Something will always happen to you if your daily bread has come. There is an implication to the arrival of your daily bread. Are we together now? Notice the order that when you reverence God on the strength of that, you have a right to place a demand that I should be given my daily bread immediately daily bread comes he begins to talk of many many things forgiveness avoidance of temptation and deliverance from trouble all tied to the arrival of daily bread are we together now there are many troubles and challenges that come into the life of the believer only on account of open doors most people have this understanding that the moment you are not excelling in the spirit, that is the only time when challenges can come and buffet you. But that there is a dimension of troubles and challenges that befall a believer on account of your excelling in the spirit and on account of the doors that have now been opened unto you. And if you do not understand that such a reality exists in the spirit as you'll be learning, you will be ignorant on how to manage open doors and that which was meant to be a blessing ends up becoming a curse. There are many people who have no business with certain troubles except and unless that certain doors were opened and they were not holistically mentored to know what to do with open doors. Are we learning now? So... There are battles in life that only open doors bring. Once your door is closed, you do not even know that such battles exist. It will take your doors open to now be exposed to that reality of life. Let's look at a scripture and then I would now begin to discuss. In Acts chapter 16, are we learning already? Verse 11, Acts chapter 16, please give us from verse 11. The Bible says, not verse 1, 11, yes. It says, therefore, speaking now about um, the apostles, it says, therefore, losing from Troas, we came with a straight course to all of that name, and the next day to Neapolis, verse 12. And from thence to Philippi. Now watch this. They are right, Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia and a colony. And we were in that city abiding certain days. Let's continue. It says, and on the Sabbath, we went out into the city by a riverside where prayer was one to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted hither. He's, he's narrating a story now. And a certain woman, so they went out and found a woman called Lydia. The Bible called her a seller of purple. She was a wealthy woman, a woman obviously of royalty and grace. And the Bible says she was of the city of Thyatria and she worshiped God. When she had us, her heart was opened and she attended to us unto the things that were spoken of Paul. Verse 15. The Bible says, and when she was baptized and her household, she besought us saying, if ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house. Does that look like an open door? She opened the door of opportunity and said, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Verse 16. While they stayed with her, enjoying the blessings that they had now received, a right hand of fellowship in Philippi, the Bible says, A time came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel, possessed with the spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by suit saying. 
17. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God. Can you imagine the accuracy of our suit saying? Which show us the way of salvation. Absolutely nothing wrong about that statement. And this did she for many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. 19. You would call this a display of the power of God. You would call this an opportunity to see Jesus revealed even in Philippi. Now, this was a man who had secured favor with Lydia. And now this was an opportunity to bring fame to the name of Jesus. The Bible says, when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas. What a demon could not do. The human beings who are now angry are now about to bring the apostles in trouble. It didn't take more than a minute to speak a word and that demon left the woman. Now trouble is about to come as a result of this opportunity that has been opened. The Bible says they drew them to the marketplace unto the rulers, verse 20, and brought them to the magistrates saying, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city. Notice the intelligence of these guys. They never said they came and stopped us from making money. Are we together now? They said these guys being Jews, this is the trouble that they brought. And they went straight to the judicial system. And they said, listen, we need help from the judicial system to punish these people because they are Jews. They are bringing trouble to our city. Reading to 24. Let's finish up. 21. They said, and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. Look at the intelligence of these guys. The whole goal was not an advocacy for the purity of the Rome, the Roman people. The goal was an annoyance because certain things were happening to these guys. And now, because the liberty of the spirit was being expressed within that place, there were repercussions to it. The Bible says they teach customs that were not profitable for us to receive being Romans. Verse 22. And the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates rent off their clothes. Can you imagine the anger? and commanded to beat them 23 and when they had laid many stripes upon them don't forget that these men who are going through this trouble are anointed men the anointing was demonstrated a few moments ago in the presence of a lady with the spirit of divination and here after that kind of thing you thought the next story would be an interesting crusade or the next thing would be an interesting celebration where they would say, finally, we have gotten these people. How do you reconcile stripes with the manifestation of the supernatural? That right after a fantastic miracle, only God knows how many people had been defrauded by their divination. Now the apostles brought liberty and they were about to pay for it. They cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Verse 24. The Bible says, Who haven't received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. Let's stop there for now. Now you understand what I mean by there are certain battles and certain challenges that you have no business even knowing about their existence except and unless you rise and ascend to certain dimensions listen this already is a message that ministers maturity so that in dealing with people you will have the discernment to understand that when god tells you to pray for all men you have no idea of the existence of the battles the battles that exist at certain realms and certain strata of life for as long as you've not gotten a job, you may never understand the possibility of jealousy towards an excelling staff. 
So when someone is telling you, look, it looks like something happens in you, cannot relate because you are surrounded by too much kindness. And because that level of breakthrough has not come, you've not captured that possibility in your mind. Are we together? There are many people whose innocence today is not because they are free from trouble. They've not risen to the realm that makes that trouble necessary in their life. Are we together now? There are battles in life that only open doors bring. Pay attention. The second thing I want you to know is that the nature of the fallen man and the believer who is not transformed, the nature of the fallen man and the believer who is not transformed will always react negatively to growth and lifting. Let me take it again. That the nature of the fallen man and the nature of the believer in Christ who has not been transformed will by default react negatively when in the presence of lifting or in the presence of rising. Please pay attention to this. This has nothing to do with being good or bad. That enshrined as a weakness in the nature of the fallen man and then the believer who has not contended for sufficient transformation, there is a tendency that is enshrined within all men as unbelievers and believers who have not been transformed by the Spirit that they will always eventually react negatively if and when in the presence of growth in the, in the presence of excellence. That means knowing this already prepares you to know that your rising will have a repercussion. Are we together now? I have taught you that the highest psychological need of every man is the need to feel loved, the need to feel appreciated, and the need to feel significant. So if an individual, for instance, is stunted at a level and does not seem to make progress and here comes another individual or a group of individuals who are excelling perpetually and in an ever increasing way i'm saying is a natural response in the fallen man to now begin to exhibit elements of envy and jealousy and bitterness it has nothing to do with being good or bad if you're with me say amen, amen. hallelujah you will understand the implication of Jesus' prayer. Jesus is teaching us, pay attention every time your daily bread arrives. Pay attention the moment that mantle lands upon your life. Pay attention the moment the doors begin to open. Pay attention the moment the promotion comes. Pay attention the moment the ministry begins to excel. Because as you are learning now, open doors have implications. Are we together? Very, very powerful and very important. First Corinthians 16 and verse 9. Nobody else puts it better than the apostle himself. Apostle Paul, from his own experience, this man who is teaching this had been lashed because of open doors. So he's not writing cunningly devised fables. Are we together? He's writing as a product of the things he had seen, the things he had heard, unfortunately the things even his body had handled he said for a great door and effectual is opened unto me and there are how many the adversaries are many as the doors a great door and effectual is opened unto me and there are many adversaries please look up let me tell you this you see most believers because of the way the kingdom is structured if you have the advantage of being raised from a family that is very, uh, a family of believers, even if morally um, sound alone, or you have the opportunity to be shielded early within a church or a prophetic covering that shields you from a lot of things, chances are excellent that in your learning God, and most times, we men of God must take responsibility because in mentoring people, sometimes we shield them from understanding the reality of the cosmos as it is. So there is a mindset that the average believer has that in the face of real life situations, they cannot seem to relate with it. Because now you grew up in a family where everyone is greeting you, everyone is saying, God bless you. Even the person you call wicked still prays and fasts and is kind. You see that now? 
And so chances are excellent that we think that is the view of life holistically. Then when we have the opportunity to now step out, we begin to see other dimensions to life and men and living that is foreign to our training. That's why many believers do not last. They excel in church. But now when they step into the cosmos, they've not been equipped with the intelligence to know how to navigate in light of these realities. Now you understand what I just said. That the nature of the fallen man and the believer who is not transformed will always react negatively to growth and lifting. This is very powerful. What then does it mean to deliver? To deliver means to save. To deliver means to rescue. To deliver means to set free. In the simplest expression, to deliver means to save, to salvage. To deliver means to rescue. To deliver means to set free. Very quickly, the Bible teaches us that there are three levels of evil three levels of evil we have another series and so we'll take time to deal with that but just for you to have an understanding there are three levels of evil that the bible mandates that believers must contend for deliverance from number one the first level of evil is satan and wicked spirits first peter chapter 5 and verse 8 three levels of evil that were mandated to contend for deliverance from Satan and wicked spirits. First Peter 5 and verse 8. Here's what it says. It says, be sober. Apostle Peter is teaching us now. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So Satan is perpetually seeking whom he may devour. Are we together now? It says, be sober, be vigilant. It never calls the devil your friend. It never calls the devil an ally. In fact, the Bible calls him many things, including the thief and now your adversary. Are we together? So the first level of evil that we must contend for deliverance from is Satan and wicked spirits. Are you ready for number two? The second level of evil that the Bible says to contend for deliverance from is wicked and unreasonable men. Write it down, please. Wicked and unreasonable men. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, we'll read from verse 1 to 3. Second Thessalonians 3, 1 to 3. Wicked and unreasonable men. Finally, brethren, he says, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. Verse 2. It says, and that we may be delivered. Is that in your Bible? He's saying, pray for us. We are apostles, we are men of God, but we still need your prayer. That we be delivered not only from Satan, but that we be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. Why? He said, for all men have not faith. I wish we could look at this from NIV or NLT. One of the versions will say that all men are not believers. He says, pray for us. NLT now. He said, pray too that we be rescued from wicked and evil people. The apostle is saying, scattered across your environment are such people. Not everyone is like that, but there are people like that. Are we together? It says, for not everyone is a believer. This is a very powerful information that you need to have and understand. It should not plant antagonism, but is, is an information that should create a garrison of defense within your mind. That in your environment, you will always find this man. For not everyone is a believer. Back to my illustration about the naivety of many Christians. Because the believer is mandated and the atmosphere, the kingdom culture demands that the law of love is what prevails among people. So many believers haven't been raised by Christian families, Christian homes are largely naive as to the reality of this world. The Bible says... We know that we are of God, he says, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. The whole world, not Nigeria, the whole world, not your village, the whole world, not Africa. The whole world lieth in wickedness. That means if you ever run out of any region in search 
for safety from Satan, you made a wrong mistake. The key is not a translocation. The key is to understand this system. Are we together now? That means if you run from Abuja and go to Lagos in hope that you are running from Satan, by the intelligence of scripture, that is a futile venture because Satan is so energetic, he can run to and fro the whole earth. Now, I don't know how many pilots can do that successfully, but this guy has mastered the art of movement. He is not weak. Satan is testifying before God about Job from whence comest thou, and he said from to and fro the earth. You should have a healthy, maybe not honor, but an appreciation for the presence of such a determined person. <laughs> a spirit that sustains the zeal to go to and fro the earth. It means the potential or the probability of meeting you is 100%. <laughs> he will find you somewhere. <laughs> Are we together? Amen. Wicked and unreasonable men. He says, for not all men have faith. Have this at the back of your mind, ladies and gentlemen, that when doors open, among the many people you will meet through open doors are wicked and unreasonable men. Wicked and unreasonable men. In Genesis chapter 37, let's look at a few things just to buttress on that. I'm discussing three evils that the Bible mandates will be delivered from one, Satan and wicked spirits, two, now wicked and unreasonable men. Give us Genesis chapter 37, please. We'll read from verse 3 to 11, then we'll jump. I just want you to watch a story. Follow very closely. Now Israel, Jacob now, loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors next verse it says and when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than the brethren notice the progression what was the the reason for the hatred the father's love for him right he had access to the father's heart and the bible says they hated him that was an elementary level and could not speak peaceably unto him so if you were Joseph, you would notice that after a healthy commendation from your father, you would suddenly begin to receive ill treatments and antagonisms from your brothers, wondering what did I do wrong? Verse 5. And Joseph dreamed a dream, say open doors, and he told his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Are you seeing it growing now? They started by hating him. And then now a dream is added to that love again. And the reaction, they hated him the more. Verse 6. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. Brotherly naivety took him to complicate his matter. He went to share his dream. For behold, verse 7 now, We were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and stood upright. And behold, your sheep stood round about and made obeisance to my sheep. Hmm. Verse 8. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? And shall thou indeed have dominion over us now? And they hated him yet the more. So we see hatred level 1. Then a dream comes the more. Then he shares the dream. Then the more. Are we together? Continue the reading, please, verse 9. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it to his brethren. Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, now pay attention, please. The sun and the moon and the 11 stars made obeisance to me. I wish I had time, would have discussed what this meant. Verse 10. And he told it even to his father now and to his brethren and even his father now was getting concerned. The father rebuked him and said, what is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? Verse 11. And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the sayings. I'm a prophet. This boy is not just dreaming. 
something is happening here that we do not understand jump to verse 18 wicked and unreasonable men and when they saw him afar off the father now sent him to come and check the welfare of the brothers even before he came near unto them the bible says they conspired against him to slay him question what did joseph do that was wrong he was loved then he dreamt then he dreamt again then he dreamt again are we together so the question you've been asking what did i do here is the answer you dreamt and you listened to a message and you paid attention and you prayed and you fasted and you rose in the spirit it was interpreted as an offense in the spirit because it's now listen carefully <laughs> Let's read to 20, 18 to 20. When they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. 19. It says, and they said to one another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. 20. Come now, therefore, let us slay him and cast him into some pit. Now, notice that those that were talking were people of the same bloodline. They were his brothers. That is how far you do not know the potential that is in the unregenerate man to fight growth. Most people take for granted the reaction of success in the face of people who are not saved or not transformed. The Bible is teaching you here that you need to be careful. Don't just jump through open doors and be smiling. While you enter open doors, make sure you begin to prepare and fortify yourself with knowledge. I guarantee you, except it is not an open door, there will be adversaries. Hallelujah. Hmm. Did we finish 20? Let's throw him into the pit. And then we will say some evil beast that devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. The whole battle was about dreams, not the person. There are battles that have nothing to do with you. It's the mantle that is on you. There are battles that have nothing to do with you. It's a mandate. Listen very carefully. The prophecy that is on you is what is attracting many things you do not know the only way to abort that battle is to throw away the prophecy but for as long as it is on you listen carefully for as long as it is on you i guarantee you by the integrity of scripture there are battles that you will have to learn how to fight you will have to be like the men of David, trained at the cave of Adullam. You must know how to hold the sword and to fight with valiance until you are able to throw 800 people and still stand with your sword. Otherwise, some doors will become a curse to you. Not even Jesus was spared of this. Out of a family where nobody rises, suddenly the apostolic and the prophetic mantle lands on your life and you start to share dreams and visions and you said it like a joke and it happened you said it like a joke and it happened you said my sister will get a job they laughed and it happened after three days something will start being wrong with your shoes something will start being wrong with your hair why did you come home late and you are wondering what happened there is a reaction from the spirit listen to me if you do not know this life will teach you a lesson that will take many years to learn open doors have implications are we together there are three evils that every man will fight provided doors open one satan himself and evil spirits number two wicked and unreasonable men very quickly number three the flesh the flesh oh whoever told you that it is only satan you have to fight the flesh let me tell you something about the flesh in my opinion of all these three evils this is the most vicious of them because you can cast evil spirits you can run away from wicked and unreasonable men but this flesh you see it remains with you and the Bible says to crucify it and you die daily. 
the flesh. <laughs> Romans 7 from verse 18. For I know that in me, again, our Paul is speaking now, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, he says, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Let's continue. It says, for the good that I would, that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not want to do, that is what I do. Verse 8, 20, let's continue. It says, now, if I do that which I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. 21. It says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. 22. For I delight in the law of God sincerely in the inward man. Are you seeing the conflict now? But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. 24. It says, O wretched man that I am, an apostle that casted demons without talking twice, is now expressing frustration. What kind of an enemy is this that you cannot cast out with one word? O Oh, wretched man that I am he says who shall deliver me Paul is crying is there someone who can deliver me from this body of death listen the flesh is so vicious in its operation that it reveals itself in levels according to your growth there are many times that the flesh will lie low for many years and you would flatter yourself into thinking you have attained unto liberty without pressing in the spirit. It is simply because certain doors have not been opened. If you are not Solomon the king, you have no business with Bathsheba. Are we together now? Yes. If you are not Samson the warrior, you have no problem with Delilah. No. Are we together now if you are not Abraham the one who should be the father of nations you have no problem with the frustration of barrenness that will lead to the birth of Ishmael let me tell you ladies and gentlemen please hear me as you rise your flesh has a way of reinventing strategies that is able to attack and challenge you at the level of your growth there are some temptations that will never come to your life when you are broke it's not that you are delivered from them the temptation cannot work because what it feeds on to get to you is not even there. Are we together now? Please listen very carefully. If you have not been given an appointment in an office where there is a cash flow of one billion naira every week, the, you will think that you have immunity against bribery and corruption and you may even have the audacity to write a book about those who are doing it. This is why the older men become, the more silent they become. Because there is something they learn with time. That this life bar, at the end of it all, it is God. Is someone learning? Now you will understand why Jesus said in your prayer, do not forget to bring this. Deliver us from evil. Hallelujah. Why will there be an attack over your car when there is no car there? I'm not being sarcastic now. Are we together now? Yes. There are many believers today who believe that they have attained unto a spiritual state that has magically immune them from certain things. No. The flesh is lying low, quietly, allowing you... Do you know... Now, let me speak a bit of biology. It is said a woman from age 12 or 13 or so has the potential to give birth. But a woman can stand even at age 40 and her womb is there and you will never see pregnancy because the condition that allows that pregnancy has not yet been engaged. Is that true? As soon as that woman takes in seed, immediately you will see that that quiet that that pregnancy that has the potential for it had always been there same thing happens with a man this is how the flesh is there is something the flesh is waiting for to activate it operation and the unemployment issue 
has helped the flesh to lie quiet so you can believe that I am fine and I am free. Are we together? There is a certain level of increase and influence that if it has not yet come, oh Jesus, for as long as you are still a baby, even though you are the word incarnate, no problem. But as long as the news of your arrival got to Herod, Herod said, who did you say? Go and search the archives for me. Is there such and such a prophecy? He said, let me know where that child is so that I will come. Do you know that because of the arrival of Jesus, many women lost their children? Does that look like a savior? What kind of a savior whose arrival makes the death of... There was a lamentation in Rama. Many people died because a gift that will save the world arrived. Whoever told you that good things don't create conflict? Whoever told you that the arrival of glorious things will not bring contention from hell? Are we together now? Yes. This is a very powerful teaching. Jesus arrives. If you were the woman who lost your child, would you want to see Jesus? And they told you prophetically that this is the Savior. You want to save my life and you killed my child by your arrival. What a Savior. How about Mary? The moment it was announced in the spirit, Hail Mary, that salutation came and he said, you are favored. The next thing that followed her life was trouble and controversy. She was about to lose Joseph. Are we together? And then the scribes and the Pharisees came, just confess, who is the father of this child? A ghost. You must be stupid. You are playing with our intelligence on top of the fact that you have brought shame to your husband and our family. I'm an innocent young virgin. We do not believe that. Ladies and gentlemen, open doors come with challenges. That is the reason why men must be prepared to attain stature in the spirit. There are many doors that it is God that closed by himself because you have been weighed in the spirit and God has seen that if that door is open, the, left, the bankruptcy of spiritual intelligence and stamina, you will die because a door opened. So he will close the door as an act of his mercy and quickly send you to men and women who would midwife your growth until you attain stature in the spirit and then that door will be opened. Are we together? You hear that in a family, the last person who became a pastor got mad after a crusade. You laughed hysterically and say, how can a man finish preaching and then be mad? And now you don't know anything about the dynamics of liberty. You have not learned that much. And then you wanted to go and organize a crusade in the same village. And you find out that the more you pray, the more the crusade is not holding. Don't force it. God is saying, listen, young man, it is true that Christ died, but we rise through light. You do not understand the ancient powers and the altars that have pegged their relevance in that land. You come in like Paul and just believe you dislodge darkness without spiritual intelligence. You will wake up with half of you not waking up. Many, many people have not followed the protocol of the spirit and they've barged into open doors arbitrarily to their pain. To their peril there are temptations you have no business going through for instance is it not when you are a big man that you now begin to fight for titles you didn't call me apostle joshua selman do you know who i am if you were a brother in the wilderness somewhere any name they call you even if they say yes you will answer but now that the door has been opened and you are a great man apostle joshua selman it is amazing to know that there is a whole industry that is built around ego because the higher you rise some unnecessary things become necessary so much that an industry was built around it if you are learning say amen, amen. some of you are praying and say god close that door i'm not i don't even want to get <laughs> you must pass through the door in the name of jesus hallelujah I remember one gentleman who came one time, I don't know if he was here or he was in Zaria, and he just brought a poster. He said he was taking a step of faith. He saw it in a dream. He wanted to go and hold a crusade in a stadium in his place. And I looked at him with compassion. I said, my friend, God doesn't work like this. Huh? Just take it easy. Be faithful in your prayer group where you, and he was determined. I know what I had. I said, okay, God go with you. You see, yeah? Sometimes it's very good to allow life itself. 
to be able to help it's only that sometimes the casualties become so much even if you survive you will not have the strength again are we together yes battles that come as a result of growth let's tie a few things now so the bible says that the flesh is a big hindrance when doors are open I define flesh as the vulnerabilities and the negative tendencies that come with the fallen nature. The vulnerabilities and the negative tendencies that come with the fallen nature. The vulnerabilities and the negative tendencies that come with the fallen nature. And the Bible says it can be activated. It can be activated in the presence of plenty. It can be activated in the presence of abundance. Watch this. Jesus is teaching in a crusade and there are hungry people who are tarried there for three days. And now they were hungry and a responsible father would say, um, let them sit. I'm about to feed them with bread. He got five loaves, two fish, multiplied it and gave it to them. Notice what began to happen. The moment they were getting satisfied, lawlessness came in. For as long as they were hungry, they sat quietly as they shared the bread. The moment they started becoming satisfied, they started throwing remnants of the bread on the ground. And after they left, Jesus quietly said, go around, pack what they have thrown. And they found out they had wasted 12 baskets full. You will not waste bread if you are hungry. But when you eat, you can now begin to waste because there is no need again. For as long as the nation of Israel were in need of a savior and deliverance, they would listen to everything Moses would say. But as soon as they crossed the Red Sea and attained unto a place of liberty, Moses went up to receive the commandments and he returns back to find idol worshippers who had suddenly changed. They had forced Aaron to build a golden calf and they began to bow and worship how short a time was it from their exodus that they had now forgotten that's what happens to men in the presence of abundance give us this day our daily bread then it does not stop there he said now pay attention to what comes along daily bread when you receive daily bread then he says lead us not into temptation temptation always follows daily bread and then he says deliver us from evil hallelujah there are groups and associations you may never know exist until you rise to certain realms in life are we together now you have become a ceo you don't drink you don't smoke you love God, but you have attained a position of growth and honor where you are invited for an executive meeting. And the nature of that meeting demands global leaders to join you. And there are certain professional practices that may corrupt your conviction, but it is part of the modus operandi of that level of living. The courage it will take to stand and say no will take fasting and prayer. For you to be able to administer it because there are implications when you make the people feel stupid because of your faith are we together now yes there are many people who do not understand you get into a system where corruption is systemic it's not about your personal desire you met a design like that and your contribution is only part of the design how do you now fight that overall system you can fight an individual, but fighting systems are very difficult. Are we together now? Yes. You never knew that there was anger and frustration in you until God gave you large membership and you are preaching, people are saying amen, and nobody comes to say, Apostle, God bless you. I'm not saying you should give me money, please. I'm just using it as an example. And everybody just meets you and says, your sermon was powerful while you are trekking back home. Then you realize that that pain is in your heart. Remember, you said you don't have any business with the cares of this world. Your wife wakes you and says, is this how we are going to continue? When I married you, I knew what you told me God said. What is this thing we are seeing? That's when you will stand up and know that on a Sunday morning, you don't have a sermon because of anger. Not because you could not prepare. You are beginning to hate the people God sent you to because you don't even know what kind of stiff neck. Now you understand Moses' anger. And you will know why in spite of his anger, God still called him the meekest man. God rates people based on the pressures that are on them and the level of righteousness that oozes out in the midst of that pressure. 
Are we together? A woman who has eight children and no husband, plus five other relatives that were added to her, and she prays for only 30 minutes a day, and she's faithful in it. You can laugh at her because all your supplies come free. You can lock yourself for three days and come out into supplies that are prepared. And you will find out that God seems to honor that woman because he's rating her based on the realities that are there and her press to love God in spite of what is available. Is someone learning now? This is very, very powerful. There are vulnerabilities that come when we grow. Listen, when you know this, huh, the higher you rise, the more humble you become. I've had the honor and the privilege of relating with the fathers of faith in this nation, and I am amazed at the level of humility and brokenness within them. You would think they were such a weak people, but these people are powerful in the spirit. Something, there is an education that experience in partnership with the spirit has brought to them that they have understood that, listen, it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but in truth it is of the Lord that showeth mercy. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Do you know I found out that many men who become angry fathers, angry mothers were not born like that. Are we together? When you have five children, everything is rising except your salary. School fees is rising. Trouble is rising. Relatives are being added now. Somebody just calls you from nowhere and says, are you not aware we are related? Help me and pay my school fees. I'm not aware. I was never told that I have any cousin from anywhere so well just to inform you that i am your cousin i've told you you are our elder brother and since our parents are not there you are the new father we know responsibilities come and you find out that the man begins to get to his wife and children and sometimes the young children say why is daddy changing he will reset back in old age but for that as far as that reality is happening you find out that there are people who become things that they were not let me tell you, it's because the flesh was lying quietly, waiting for opportunities to come up. Are we together now? Yes. Who would have imagined, ladies and gentlemen, that Solomon was a murderer within, I mean, uh, David was a murderer within him. David, if you saw David, the young boy, who would not want that kind of gentleman to be a pastor? Who would not want that kind of gentleman to be a husband? You would have seen David, David epitomized the prayer point of every woman. And yet there was a murderer locked up in that young boy. But the murderer could not manifest. He could only kill animals. But you didn't know he could kill men too. One day when kings went for war, the man was roaming around his palace. And then he saw Vashti. That was the time for flesh to come out. He went so far to write a letter and gave Uriah, go and die. This is by my hand. And you thought that after Uriah died, he would say, okay, that's all right. He's still, I hope you know that's how Solomon came. <laughs> the question is, when you understand this, you now begin to pray the prayer of the psalmist, search my heart, O God and know my thoughts it says and if you find out that there is any wickedness within me lead me to the way everlasting someone shall deliver us from evil hallelujah you never know as a man of god that you like money until god brings a billionaire as a son and he says papa or man of god or apostle what do you want just speak and it will be done and God said, don't say anything. Say, God, God forbid. I've suffered in this life. You are the one fighting my own progress now. I've preached, I've done it. Now it's my own time to rest. You said there remained a rest for the people of God. Now. When you had 100,000 home and abroad, God said, give it. You said, yes, Lord. In one word, you gave it. Now you have 10, 20 million and God said, give everything. You know, I, I'm, I, I know how God speaks. God cannot be this, this wicked. 
knowing the reality of Nigeria to ask me, no, it can't be God. I reject that spirit. Satan appears as an angel of light. I reject that light. And when you finish, because God speaks once, you will hear twice. God will use every verification system you want. I am the one saying it. May you be delivered. Amen. Now, very quickly so that we can pray. There is a biblical requirement for accessing deliverance from God. If it is God you seek deliverance from, there is a condition that all men are mandated to assume. There is a posture that you must attain unto in the spirit in order to access deliverance from God. And that posture is humility and submission. Please write it down. Deliverance in the kingdom and in the spirit is only for men and women who understand the power of humility and understand the power of submission. You must come to a point where you acknowledge the reality of your human limitation outside of the help and the mercies of God. It is called brokenness in one word. First Peter chapter 5, please, from verse 6 and 7. First Peter 5, 6 and 7. Please write it and look up. The Bible says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due season. Uh -huh. Casting all your cares upon him because he cared for you. Are we together? Do you have that down? James 4, 7. James 4, 7. Submit yourself therefore to God submit yourself to god then he says resist the devil don't come and resist the devil when you are not submitted to god he says resist the devil and he will flee your submission first your humility first you want to access deliverance you must come to a point where you admit and acknowledge that outside of the help of the mighty god i do not even know the tendencies that are enshrined in my own heart and you must be able to uh, to admit it unashamedly that except god helps me Vain is the help of man, including my own self. Is someone learning now? This is very powerful. Many people want to experience that deliverance from God, but they are yet to come to a recognition that they are insufficient in themselves. Here's how the Bible puts it. It says not that we are sufficient of ourselves. He says our sufficiency is of God. What is sufficiency? The ability to always rise to the occasion. The ability to be without disappointment. You always are able to rise to the occasion. He's saying when you see that we are always full of capacity, it is not as though we attained it by our own power. We have outsourced a technology through our brokenness where we draw strength from God. Humility and submission. Listen to me. You want to experience the reality of that scripture to be delivered from evil? I can tell you that humility and submission to the governing authority of the Christ is a fundamental requirement if you will experience perpetual deliverance. Are we together? The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous, not a man, the righteous run it to it. You first have to admit that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and that until you run to it, you are not saved. We live in a world where it's marketable to be proud, it's marketable to sound self-sufficient, as though outside of the assistance of the Christ, we are able to make it on our own and by ourselves. Even Jesus Christ said, I can of my own do nothing. Is that in your Bible? I can. He declared his vulnerability without fear and without shame. Now, please write this down. Deliverance from God is based on a response system. We are going to pray now. Deliverance, obtaining deliverance from God is based on a response system. That means deliverance does not just come except it is a response. Number one, 
Deliverance comes as a response to a cry for mercy. Please write it down. Deliverance comes to the saints from God as a response to a cry for mercy. I said deliverance from God is based on a response system. Every time you see deliverance in the earth, it came as a response. Something, there was a reaction from the earth and then God responded to it. A response to a cry for mercy. Lamentations 3.22 Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 22. It says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Hallelujah. Because his compassions fail not. A response to a cry for mercy. There is something that always happens to the believer who knows how to cry to God for mercy. In Luke chapter 18 from verse 35. Luke chapter 18, please, from verse 35. The Bible says, And it came to pass, the story of blind Bartimaeus, that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat at the wayside begging. 36 now. And hearing the multitudes pass by, he asked what it meant. Next verse. The Bible says, And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by, uh -huh, and he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. This is very powerful. Next verse. And the Bible says, And they which went before rebuked him, that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. God will always respond to the cry of mercy. Next verse. Reading to 43. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come, he asked him, uh -huh, saying, What will thou that I do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Two more verses. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith hath saved thee. Verse 3, Immediately he received his sight. Did you know that Jesus would have just passed and left that person like that? And his condition would have looked like it was the will of God for him to be left there. But he understood that in the economy of God, there is daily bread for everyone. And that you can place a demand even through the cry of mercy. Thou son of David, he said, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, Paul was teaching us that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. He says that we may obtain mercy. You don't obtain mercy where you are. You must take the step to come boldly to the throne of grace by faith. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Deliverance from God comes to the believer as a response to a cry for mercy. Hmm. Cry for mercy. Thou son of David, have mercy upon my family. Have mercy upon my health. Have mercy upon my job. We have taught for a long time in the body of Christ that mercy is for sinners. So most people do not understand the potential of mercy because they don't want to make it look like they are sinners. What are you saying mercy for? Have you done something wrong? Mercy is a mystery in the kingdom. He said above the mercy seat, below the, below the mess above the mercy seat below the cherubims there I will meet with you God meets men at the point of mercy most of us do not understand the power of God's mercy if you can please do listen to my teachings on mercy I have taught extensively about mercy the Bible tells us of the prodigal son that this gentleman began to deteriorate and deplete until he who was once royalty with his father had now been reduced to feed with swine. Here's what he said. The Bible says he came to himself and he said, How many hired servants does my father have? And I am here feeding with the swine. He said, I will arise and I will go to my father. And I will say unto you, Father, I have sinned against you. You see brokenness there? And against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your slaves. Then the Bible says he got up and then he started going. Notice he never met the father at home. Because once you take the step, God will always meet you at the point of your obedience. It was as though the father was waiting for him to take that step. And then he met him. 
There are many people today who have experienced mighty deliverance from God. Ten people can be in the same situation financially, ministerially, and a few of them will come out as if the devil does not exist because somewhere in that equation, someone knew how to cry for mercy. Lord, if you, I know that I do not understand financial principles to fund this ministry with integrity, but I cry that you are the God of heaven and because your mercies are new every morning, show me mercy. And that person who may not even know the dynamics of financial prosperity someone can just call him and say God said I should give you a billion and you match the person with the results and they don't add up because mercy has spoken may someone be a beneficiary of the mercy of God in the name of Jesus Christ mercy a response to the cry for mercy when I go to God in prayer, praying for myself and this ministry, I've told you, I don't go to God like a man of God coming to meet a colleague in ministry. I go to him expressing, not out of a standpoint of condemnation, but the depth of my ignorance. Lord, I do not know so many things. You have granted me the grace to come this far. I pray that your mercy will be and remain at the corridors of my destiny. Because outside of your mercy, this world is vicious. Outside of the mercy of God, it takes mercy before favor arrives. It said, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. So the time for favor, the first thing you look for is mercy first before the favor. Are we together? Yes. The mercy of God. There are many easy things that have become hard because we are still standing by our own strength. Trust in the Lord, Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. With all your heart, it says, and lean not unto your own understanding. It says, in all your ways, verse 6, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Verse 7 is a warning to men. Be not wise in your own eyes, it says, but fear the Lord and depart from evil father it is by your mercy i'll be able to raise this child not i know i will raise my child god forbid that my child becomes an armed robber you know how many sincere serious missionaries who invested in raising other people when it got to their own children everything you know to mentor a child properly they did and the child still became an armed robber. How do you explain Judas being mentored by Jesus? How do you explain Satan as Jesus' creation becoming Satan? Are we together now? You would think an excellent God should be so flawless in his creation and his all-knowing ability should have pre-informed him that somewhere along the economy of his creation, there could be a possibility he would have programmed that in creating them. Yet a third of the angels fell and he still remains God. Yet Satan, his creation has become the act enemy of his program and his purposes today. Judas, the one who was responsible for the bag, lost three things I've taught you. He lost the money, he lost his place, his bishopric, and he lost his life. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you that it is by the mercy of God that we thrive and excel. You are in ministry here, you are in business. I want you to know that you must perpetually walk in the consciousness that all we are and all that we have is by and large a product of God's mercy hallelujah I told you about a gentleman years ago this guy fasted that's the longest I've seen that I know he fasted for 400 days 6 to 6 400 days I wrapped up the last day with him and after that guy wrapped it up he started suffering and now you are wondering I'm looking at my life and say ah if it is by the investment of spiritual things, some of us should not be where we are. But Lord, for your mercy. You see, the awareness of God, the administration of God's mercy is what brings thanksgiving, genuine thanksgiving. 
Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be? There are many of us, based on the kind of training you gave your children, your children should almost be, respectfully speaking, they should not attain unto the level they now have. But the mercy of God caused that when your children left you, God brought prophets and apostles to cover them. They served as midwives so that the adults you now have are not the children. The trajectory of your training should not produce those kind of champions. But the mercy of God, the mercy of God. Some of you, you saw idols eat up your family members and it's not like you were more spiritual. One of the ones that died was even a pastor while you were an unbeliever. But God meandered you through a crusade and here you are today standing. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be Mephibosheth, when you get to the palace, do not forget that you were that crippled young man at Lodebar. It took the mercy of God for David to bring you. So do not laugh at Ziba. Ziba had 15 sons and not one of them was favored. They were made to walk and serve Mephibosheth. He was a product of a wrong midwife. A midwife made a mistake at his birth and crippled him. He would have remained like that, but God showed him mercy. Mephibosheth, when they bring you to the palace, I know you can act pious, but when you stay a few weeks in the palace, do not allow the memory of where you came from to be so eroded that you lose touch. That was the mistake of Vashti. She forgot that the only reason why she was queen was that she married a king. Not because she was a warrior over 127 provinces. She only married a great man. That's what made her a great woman. And she now created a camp and an empire for herself outside of the influence of the king. And she lost her place. Esther was about to make the same mistake when Mordecai said, don't make that mistake. Haman is about to annihilate the Jews. And don't you sit there and act, don't act. You were a village girl in Shushan. Don't forget the purpose for your attaining that glory. Hear me, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when doors open, be ever conscious of the mercy of God. Do not allow the beauty of the palace to make you look down on others and forget that it was mercy that took you there. Man of God, do not celebrate your ministry and go around sarcastic and being sarcastic and insult people. Shame on this one, small church. Oh, you have forgotten that it takes many years for a building to rise, but in minutes that building can crumble. Listen carefully. You have now become a multi-millionaire. You have now become a billionaire. And you look at everybody and they are like pieces of rag. I'm reminding you that if you want to experience deliverance, you must know how to call for mercy and live in the atmosphere of mercy. My life today is a product of God's mercy. Look at me. This is all of me. There are some things that cannot be done by men except God assists a man. Nicodemus came to Jesus in John 3 by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except God be with him. There are some results men cannot produce, ladies and gentlemen. And in the presence of this plenty, the tendency is that we want to savour the glory and make it look as, it, as though it came as a product of our intelligence. For as long as I am breathing, I will let the world know. It is true that he has helped us to pay our price in various places. But I tell you, it will be foolish of me to stand here and beat my chest to tell you everything you see is a reflection of intelligence. No. 
I'm the one you have shown mercy you have shown me mercy you have shown me mercy I'm the one say you have shown mercy you have shown me mercy you have shown me mercy I'm the one Listen, years ago I went somewhere and I went to preach for a man of God and when I was done preaching, I was headed to his office and I saw a gentleman who was walking as part of the protocol. He looked at me and I looked at him and I was in shock. Many years ago on campus, that guy used to be a very strong person, very vibrant and powerful. If you saw that gentleman, you would think he would explode in a global ministry within two years. And here was this, my dear brother, didn't seem like the best of states, seemed like someone who had been beaten by life and frustrated. I was almost tempted to say what happened. Then I remembered. Man, these guys were vibrant. When I say, you know what it means? Campus vibrancy is... is is with the infancy of spiritual work so you put your energy to it you look beyond me oh and poured your love you look beyond me oh you look beyond me oh sing i'm the one say i'm the one Hear me. Thank God for these great people that God has blessed me with. But I remember the crowd that was in Jesus' ministry. They were the same people who said crucify him. So the larger they are, the more the voices that can say crucify you. You will need to cry for mercy. Cry for mercy. And say, Lord, not by our righteousness, but it is by your grace. The, the, the deliverance power of God comes in response to a cry for mercy. Apostle, right now I do not even know. I am a man of God, but my family members have not eaten. Things have gone haywire in my life. What you need is a cry for mercy. You can cry the mercy of God to come and become a bailout system in your life. I can tell you this. Number two, let's hurry up because I want us to pray. Deliverance from God comes as a response to heartfelt prayer. Number one is a cry for mercy. Number two, heartfelt prayer. Deliverance from God comes in response to heartfelt prayer. Matthew 26 and 41. Jesus is speaking to Peter and the disciples. 26, 41. He says, watch and pray. We have a teaching on this later on because these two words capture a very deep mystery for surviving the evil of the times. He said, watch and pray. Watch is the product of intelligence and discernment. He says, when it has to do with your safety, there is a place for intelligence and discernment. Watch, be discerning, be vigilant. And then from the information you get from watching, you pray. You don't pray amiss when you watch. You watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. He says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. First Peter chapter 5, we read it earlier. Now let's do 8 and 9. First Peter 5, 8 and 9. Be sober and vigilant, he says, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9. It says, whom resist steadfastly in faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. In other words, this is not new. So there is a way of escape. You can resist him in the place of prayer. 
Philippians chapter 1 and verse 19, very powerful scripture. It says, for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ. Anything will turn to my salvation through your prayer. Anything at all. The challenges that now befall you as a result of open doors, they can be turned to your salvation like it happened at the prison. What was supposed to be a limitation to the apostles. Are we together now? Yes. Paul and Silas bound as a result of evangelism, as a result of promoting the purposes of God. The Bible says when they were tied there, eventually the jailer and all his family became saved. I know that this shall turn to my salvation. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but what looks like a, a dead end you are saying, Lord, the troubles that came to my life was because I got this job. I want to speak to you that in the place of prayer, there is a technology that converts pain to glory. If you know how to manage pain. I don't watch a lot of TV, but there are times I watch Food Network. And sometimes there are competitions that they have and they give them food that has stayed overnight. And they are expected to do something with that food and still produce a nice meal. Are we together? So they could give them maybe bread, food that has stayed. And it is, they now start thinking of various ways and they can turn it. You would think it was freshly prepared food. That's how it is. Something that looks like a dead end programmed by Satan. Even the falling of the pit with prayer can become your advancement into Egypt. Even Potiphar's wife's trouble that led you to the prison can become the final bouncing point before you get to the palace. For I know that this shall turn for my salvation. Every time you are afflicted, according to James 5 and verse 13, it says, is anyone afflicted, let him pray. I can tell you when you pray with understanding, it sustains the ability to produce tremendous power. In fact, the Bible says in Mark now, Mark, um, what was the scripture? Verse 24, Mark eleven twenty-four. 24. It says, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, not if ye pray. There is a relationship between desire, prayer, receiving, and having. Desire, Prayer, receiving, and having. I've told you that you can only have what you have received. If you have not received it, you cannot have it. Receiving is a spiritual technology. And then you have it as a manifestation. God is able to respond to men who travel in the place of prayer. You can access deliverance in the place of prayer. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. I can tell you that you can pray your way out of many troubles. You can pray your way out of many troubles. The moment you begin to discern that the spiritual climate is unfavorable, maybe your job, maybe your business, maybe ministry, all kinds of things are happening. Your, your husband is sick, your child is sick, finance going down. You see, the signature of Satan is discernible. The Bible says the thief cometh not, John 10, 10, but for to kill to steal and to destroy you can see his signature immediately the word of god is the principal tool for discernment you can see immediately this is satan this is satan and you begin to pray he gave us a prayer language as an advantage so that we do not walk with the limitations of the mind. The mind can catch up later on, but you can begin to engage in prayer, strategic prayer. It says the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous man availed much. Luke 18 and verse 1, he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 17, he says to pray without ceasing, be consistent in your prayer. Hallelujah. The moment doors open, that is not the time for your prayer life to go down. That is not the time of laxity. 
do not get caught up with the delicacy of the palace that you forget to pray let me tell you how to command deliverance esther is in a dilemma right now because she needs to meet king ahasuerus and the ethics of kings those days were that if you if you stepped into the king's inner chamber without his invitation and he did not leave the golden censer you were dead immediately and he said mordecai i will go if i perish i perish but now is the time to engage all of us will be on prayer even with fasting we know what prayer can do i will go to meet the king and she stepped in to meet the king and the king said come he lifted the golden censer and that became the beginning of the process that will later become the destruction of mordecai of haman the lifting of mordecai and the salvation of god's people prayer is powerful can i tell you don't fold your arms and act like nothing is happening when darkness seems to loom around your life there are seasons in your life where you need dedicated time you should be prayerful all the time but let me tell you there are moments in life and destiny kairos moments i have taught you this when seasons are about to change there are many things that start happening to you one is an unusual desire to give number two is an unusual desire to pray these are indices that show you that you are finishing a season and you are entering a new one when Jesus was about to go to the cross from the communion table he went straight to Gethsemane and the Bible says he prayed repeating the same words drew strength from there and he says I'm ready Judas came with all the people and came and kissed him and he was able to build the stamina to survive until he gave up his life on the cross can I tell you if you turn aside in the day of battle the spiritual diagnosis is that your strength is small not because victory is not possible you need capacity in the spirit I pray that God will raise CEOs that pray I pray that God will raise preachers that pray pray for me pray for me is the plague of weak people yes there is a place for intercession but let me tell you everybody who is rising must master the mysteries of the altar you must know how to hold on to the horns of the altar until you command perpetual victory there are certain burdens of leadership that come upon you if you do not know how to flog out the destinies of people in the place of prayer you will raise a weak and a defeated people prayer is powerful you lock up yourself what is happening in this ministry it looks like doors of favor is closing it looks like all kinds of things we discern the signature of darkness father we call upon you you are the deliverer as a family you find out that you're rising you're excelling God is distinguishing you among your your other people within the bloodline perhaps and it looks like it's coming with corresponding consequences now you have intelligence to know that it is nothing unusual it is part of the battles that come with growth it is the implication of open doors there are giants on every mountain don't desire the mountain without holding the tools to fight the giant be like Caleb he said let us go up at once we are well able hallelujah you must know that deliverance comes in response to prayer I can tell you you can pray negative seasons out of your life you can pray unfavorable seasons out of your life there are times you take God seriously and take your destiny seriously and engage in the place of prayer until your light breaks are we together prayer does many things it supplies the fire that exposes evil there are times you are even confused you do not even know what is happening prayer in partnership with the word is what begins to filter the happenings beyond the realm of the sight to dig deep into the spirit and know what is really happening because you see judging by the flesh you are going to misjudge so many things prayer filters your perceptions until that which is true is what stands there was a viper hiding in the midst of the wood but for as long as there was no fire the viper was comfortable the moment the wood was lit the viper was exposed
People of God, the greater you rise, let any other thing, you can outsource any other thing, but not your prayer life. Outsource those who come to wash your cars. Outsource those who come to clean your house because you are busy. Outsource a secretary. Outsource any other person. But in addition to the people who intercede for you, you must independently understand that there is something about heaven's response to your voice. To your voice. To your voice. To your voice. There is no end time ministry that will stand without a proper, consistent, ever-growing investment in the place of prayer. There is no business that will stand. I told you this. You cannot be the same person leading the field, expanding in your business, and you believe that Satan will fold his arms. Have you forgotten in the Bible where a few people bound themselves with fasting and said they would not eat until Paul died? Men can go that far for your downfall. Just because you are not wicked does not mean other people are not wicked. Not all men have faith, ladies and gentlemen. Someone can sit down and say, we see the children in this family rising. Let's see who else rises. The little work that I've done for the Lord in the ministry has shown me many possibilities that I probably would not have believed existed. As far as the administration of evil through the hearts of men is concerned. Ladies and gentlemen, please make sure you are people who understand the dynamics of the altar. My goal is to help you and support you with knowledge and to guide you. But you must pray. You must pray. You must pray. We live in times where you must understand the place of prayer. Don't say, I am weak. Start from where you are. Number three. Deliverance from God is based on a response to praise. Deliverance from God is based on number one, a cry for mercy. Number two is based on heartfelt prayer. Number three, deliverance from God to the saints is based on a response to praise. Psalm 18, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 18, verse 1 to 3. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Verse 2. It says, the Lord is my rock and my fortress. He calls him my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Let's read verse 3 together. Ready? One to read. I will call upon the Lord, it says, who is worthy to be praised. By that formula, hold on. By that formula of calling upon the Lord and adding it with praise, shall I be saved from my enemy? He was revealing a formula that I will call upon the Lord who is deserving of praise. So, by prayer and praise, shall I be saved from my enemy? If you are Paul and Silas and you find yourself in the prison, it is prayer and praise. Exodus chapter 15. Verse 1, please give it to us, let's hurry up. They sang Moses and the children of Israel. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord. Watch the song that they sang. This was after deliverance. Watch this now. They had just been delivered from the Red Sea. I will sing unto the Lord, it says, for he had triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has been thrown into the sea. Verse 2. He says, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God. I will prepare him a habitation, my father's God, and I will exalt him. Verse 3. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. These are people singing. Singing the presence of God. Verse 4. We are reading to 11. He said, Pharaoh's chariots and his hosts had he cast into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the sea. Verse 5. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom of a stone. 6. Thy right hand, O God, is become glorious in power. I hope you know this is a song. Thy right hand, O God, had dashed in pieces the enemy. 
and in the greatness of thy excellency hast thou overthrown them that rose up against thee thou settest forth thy wrath which consumed them as stubble eight and with the blast of thy nostrils the waters were gathered together the flood stood up right in a heap and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea nine the enemy said i will pursue i will overtake i will divide the spoil my loss shall be satisfied upon them i will draw my sword my hand shall destroy them verse 10 it says thou didst blow with thy wind the sea covered them they sank as leads in the mighty waters who is like unto thee O god among the gods who is like thee glorious in holiness read the remaining part fearful in praises as a result doing wonders god is fearful in praises and the moment he arises as that warrior the next thing you see are his wonders who is like unto thee O god among the gods it says glorious in holiness fearful in praises listen carefully ladies and gentlemen i can tell you by the power of the holy spirit and i can tell you from the integrity of scripture and experience praise is a deep mystery that is able to overturn possibilities and grant the insist that the believer stands at the point of victory these are the forces of the spirit that help and guide men now let's finish the scripture that we left up in acts chapter 16. we read down to 24. now let's start 25. at this point paul and silas are in prison then the bible says at midnight paul and silas prayed is that in your bible and they sang praises unto god it was so loud the prisoners heard them watch the god of heaven now suddenly Shibaka so payata. Ah, this is someone's testimony. Suddenly, it says there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. Read on 27. And the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open he drew his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had fled 28 but Paul cried with a loud voice saying do thyself no harm we are all here 29 then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas here it is he brought them out and said Silas what must I do to be saved? Anything can turn for your salvation when you know how to engage the mercy of God, you know how to engage prayer, and you know how to engage praise. 31. It says, They said unto him, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house reading to 34 and it took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes this was the jailer and was baptized and he and all his straight away the last verse and when he had brought them into his house he said meet before them and rejoiced believing in God with all his house for we know that all things work together not for everybody to them that love the Lord and to those who are the called according to his purposes so Jesus is teaching the disciples prophetically not just theologically he's teaching them because their lives and their faith adventures will be plagued with many many challenges that come with open doors and he said in your prayer the moment daily bread begins to come the moment doors and dimensions both in the spirit and in life start getting opened you must master the art of mercy you must master prayer you must master praise these mysteries you must use to surround yourself with like chariots perpetually you are one who walks in consciousness of God's mercy 
you are one who walks in consciousness of the ministry of prayer that you can lock your office as a CEO and dedicate 30 minutes and you are praying and there is a board meeting that is coming with all kinds of people coming from across the globe you would think all that you would need is brain work some of the people coming for that meetings are coming with their charms and mediums like Rachel remember when Rachel was leaving the house of Laban she took the gods of her fathers with her just because you see people's wearing suit or dressing nice they all their gods they, they are fraternities with dark powers negotiating the destinies of men upon the table of greatness you cannot go there being casual hear me many of you God wants to lift you you are trusting God to become a kingdom financier have you heard about the king of Tyre the one who sits upon the mountain of commerce of the earth you cannot come and transact business except you sell your soul he did that to Jesus there is a level of wealth you cannot attain unto just by buying and selling believe me if you are in this kingdom the person speaking to you is not in ignorance by the grace of God I know a bit about finances I can tell you there are certain heights in the spirit it is not buying and selling that takes you there there is a covenant transaction between men and spirits do you believe that <laughs> please believe oh if you suddenly return a billionaire tomorrow people will not say what did you do they'll say where did you go to this kind of result is not about what you have done again where you you must have gone somewhere and they are right a man goes to bed and sleeps in the night and has a dream in that dream he receives an impartation of an understanding heart and then he's also given access to wealth like no other person and then he wakes up and his fame spreads abroad resources start coming remember it will come through men but it is still controlled from the realm of the spirit when job lost everything that he had job lost everything but he did not lose his relationship with god and his ability to sustain to capture the mysteries of the spirit in job chapter 42 and verse 10 the bible says god turned the captivity of job when he prayed for his friends and the bible says the lord gave job twice as much as he had i'm interested in knowing how that twice came the bible is not silent about it 11 it tells us what happened that there came unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before it meant something drove them away from him now they came and did eat bread with him and in his house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over the evil that the lord had brought upon him here's the secret and every man gave him a piece of money and an earring of gold all blessings come from god through men to men that's how he got twice everything he lost abraham who was broke how did god prosper him he went to egypt and then Abimelech was going to take his wife and God warned him and said, if you touch that man's wife, you're already dead. And Abimelech said, sorry, I will not only leave your wife, I will give you gold and all kinds of things. And he left with it. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, your possibilities in this kingdom are based on the mysteries that you know and you can handle in the spirit. Dominion and stature is, is possible when you stand upon this mystery. These things are not cunningly devised fables. They are the mysteries that men transact with in the spirit and it produces the possibilities that we enjoy in the earth realm. Hallelujah. Jesus said, deliver us from evil. The doors of persecution will open as the doors of increase come to. The doors of witchcraft, manipulation and attacks will come. A day will come where you don't need to ask if anybody has taken your name to a shrine. What you'll be asking is how many? Not has it gone there? There is a level in the spirit where while you are calling upon the name of the Lord, there are people who will be praying perpetually there are realms where Satan does not want you to backslide. He wants you to die. Because even in your backsliding state, you are still dangerous. He wants you to die. Are we together now? Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. 
what you have learned and you are learning are irrefutable secrets of the kingdom that guarantee your rising but if I did not teach you what you learned today many of you will be surprised that God will call you dear Mary thou favored one and the next thing here comes the scribes and the Pharisees asking you questions and saying this vision that came without the assistance of a man you need to explain it how did that pregnancy happen without the natural process of conception they will say how did you become a millionaire without cutting corners are you sure are you really sure the bible says in ephesians chapter 3 from verse 10 and 11 to the intent he says that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places all of the things when you read from 3 Ephesians 3 and verse 3 Paul began to speak how that by revelation it was made known unto him the mystery as he wrote in few words verse 4 reading to 5 he says whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ which in ages past he says were not known to the sons of men but had now be revealed to his holy apostles and prophets even by the spirit go to verse 9 he now says that this grace was was given to him to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things in Christ to the intent now verse 8 that is why God grants access to revelations so that unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God The manifold wisdom of God give us this day our daily bread give us this day access to the doors of destiny that needs to be opened give us this day access to superior levels of influence across the cosmos give us this day access to levels of the anointing superior end time mantles but Lord as you grant us access to this day, we pray that you lead us not into temptation. And then please help them. Deliver, he says, deliver us from the evil that comes with growth. Deliver us from the evil that comes with speed. Deliver us. Elijah, you have been sent as a Tishbite to speak over Israel. But beware, your rising is also the rising of Jezebel. She will look for you. The battle was over two people. Ahab the king in partnership with that she goddess encapsulated in a woman called Jezebel. Jezebel was not a woman. She was a spiritual system of rebellion. It's an extension of the antichrist system. That is why it's a spirit that only tries when it is connected to government. That's why she stayed with Ahab. The same spirit manifested through Herodias when Herod came because John the Baptist now resurfaced in the spirit of Elijah. Listen to me. If you are Elijah, expect Jezebel she's watching you don't you think you would just stand and prophesy the prophets of Baal are the easy part of the deal but that she goddess is vicious Elijah ran away from her a man that called fire to consume others are we together I told you with the arrival of mantles destinies there are many, many, many attacks. Ah, I just said mantles and I just saw fire. This is what I saw in the spirit. As I said mantles, I just saw fire. Mantles, 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 mantles. Because there are doors that God is opening. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. There are dimensions that have not yet been made access, accessible to anyone in your family. Now you are coming from behind like Joseph. Not the first, but the chosen. Not the first, but the chosen. And those doors are about, you have mastered the art of saying, Ephata, 
for the doors to open you have to understand how to now hold the sword because let me tell you the truth warriors do not just speak warriors fight warriors do not just speak they fight they are men and women who must know how to hold the sword of the spirit and fight with valiance you can't turn back your turning back will be the destruction of a generation it says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and it says to run with perseverance there is no going back not for the warrior you master the art of using the sword and you fight with valiance say blow the trumpet in zion sound the alarm upon my holy mountain and he begins to describe a people so vicious he said before them is as a garden of eden behind them a desolate wilderness these are men that can fight i have fought a good fight he says hear me whether you are in ministry or you are in business provided doors are open don't just wear suit carry the armory of a warrior as you enter through those doors a time will come you will need to remove a ceo regalia and put on the garment of a warrior there are giants on every mountain be like caleb stand tall oh david do not let goliath scare you you can take him down not by the sling but by the covenant that you stand upon he said you come to me with your bows and your spears but i come to you in the name of the lord god of the armies of israel in whom you have defiled listen we're about to pray but ladies and gentlemen please hear me the prayer deliver us from evil some of you the doors that are opening right now you came to church with questions about the happenings in your life what is suddenly happening to my health the moment they made me a ceo they said i have high blood pressure where is it coming from welcome as you encounter the giants that sit on those mountains it is not for you to start discussing warriors don't discuss they fight take up your arsenals the work God has given you will not just keep rising like that and then the devil folds his arms he will come as many things Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember years ago, there was a gentleman who was going to get an appointment. I think he was in, in an oil and gas company. This guy had labored and worked hard. Everybody in the family had struggled financially and in destiny. They were sincere people. And then this guy kept engaging this mistress. Finally, a job that was going to come and open a door to wipe the tears of people. Do you know what happened? This guy slept and suddenly started having all kinds of funny dreams. This was according to him. And then they would, they, he was supposed to bring a report of medicals. And there were specific hospitals they were to go to. From nowhere, this guy was diagnosed with something that was going to make him lose that job. I remember very clearly. He reached me and said, I've never been like this. I, this, this was my genotype. This is my blood group. This is this. Where did this one come from? And I told him, I said, my friend, let me tell you, if you are interested in that job, you need to know that Satan has determined a threat that in your rising is the rising of many. Instead of fighting everybody, he should fight you. Hear me. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. There are men that are equal to nations. Instead of Satan fighting nations, he will focus on fighting them. If he can fight the mantle upon your life, that would be equivalent to fighting a million people across the globe. If he can fight your ministry, 
it is cheaper than fighting all who will rise from you if you can fight your business he is by extension fighting all those who look up to you for direction and inspiration it's time to fight the fight of faith I told that gentleman I said I will pray for you the devil is a liar don't believe that nonsense here is an opportunity for your rising to help wipe the tears of your family hallelujah there are many of you here who are victims of the realities of foundations and God wants to lift your family not just you oh Joseph the attack is not on you the attack is on the deliverer who will save Egypt Israel it is not about you Joseph one day you will become the second in command you will have access to preserving the destiny of a nation Moses it is not about you satan is too serious to fight individuals he fights dreams he fights prophetic programs he fights mantles oh prophet hear me the battle you are going through has nothing to do with you it is a mantle that you are carrying an apostolic and a prophetic mantle satan was there when prophecy was spoken over you Satan was there when declarations were made. He was not angels alone. He was there. He had the declarations. Listen. Did you ever ask why Satan kept moving through the scribes and the Pharisees to ask Jesus who he was? They met John the Baptist and said, are you that one? what was satan looking for he didn't say why are you here there, there was a person they were looking for and john kept confusing them who are you i am the voice of one crying in the wilderness saying repent make straight his ways and then jesus comes you know why satan killed john because he knew the jesus and he did not say it when jesus was finally ordained and commissioned he ensured that like Jezebel wanted the head of Elijah the head of John the Baptist went for it I shared with you my visions years ago I was praying one night and then the roof the ceiling of my room just disappeared and I'm seeing this creature that is standing before me, a giant creature looking like a dinosaur, having a tail that had its own life that could be disconnected from the creature and still be alive. Bulgy eyes. One eye was looking like the head of a man and he was looking with fierce anger and spoke fluently. So you think you can bring God's people into abundance. I have met demons. I have met spirits it is not only angels I have met I have met demons I have met spirits I can tell you one thing with the devil he's determined when he finds out that there is prophecy on your life when he finds out that you're opening the door is the rising of many get ready the king of Tyre he will wait for you Elijah there are bands of prophets waiting to come and frustrate you but thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. Thanks be to God. Hear me? The secret now is in Job 38 and verse 33. It says, Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven, and canst thou establish the dominion thereof in the earth? Do you know the principles by which the mysteries by which the heaven regulates itself and can you reproduce that reality in the earth this is what Jesus meant when he said your kingdom come and your will be done 
capture the principles, the modus operandi of the spirit and reproduce it within your life, within your sphere. And you truly will begin to walk like a God upon the earth. Psalm 82 and verse 5, he says, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are God and all of you, not some, are children of the most high. The next verse says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. I made up my mind that as far as it depends on me, as far as it depends on me, I will not only force those doors to open that everyone behind me it says i and the children that the lord has given me we are for signs and for wonders you are not the only one who came from a bad background find out where jesus came from nathaniel said can anything good come out of nazareth and jesus did not say you are lying because the most popular nazarene that they knew died in a very painful way the man called Samson that there was a spirit that followed great Nazarenes even though they were people who had a covenant with God and would just destroy them at the prime of their life Nathaniel said don't waste your time following Jesus there is something in his foundation his success will not last and Jesus sees such a man and says an Israelite indeed in whom there is no guile in other words from the sincerity of his heart what he's saying is true I know it is true that people who come from where you are from never rise beyond a certain threshold it is true until your access to the mysteries of the kingdom rewrites that script I know it is true that certain people never attain onto a level of wealth and abundance with a kingdom mindset it looks like the only way you live is by begging all the days of your life anointed but you are a beggar and so the spirit wants but you can arise and rewrite certain things rewrite certain things rewrite certain things every decree can change let me tell you the truth every decree can change even when Haman died the king had already stamped a decree that permitted the death of the Jews so the, the enemy had gone but the system was still going to cause their defeat and Esther came and told the king you are a king you are the one who wrote the first one you can write another decree again we change decrees by writing another decree who wrote the decree that you will not rise I am also a king and a priest unto my God and I can take the advantage of that king priest dimension in partnership with the spirit and right that from this moment henceforth everybody rises that from this moment henceforth everybody rises that from this moment henceforth God is glorified in everybody connected to me where the word of a king is the Bible says there is power hear me if the power from your royalty does not speak it means that your scepter of honor and authority has not been given to you or the consecration that ordains you as a king is not there or you have refused to use your authority to declare but hear me oh David when the oil comes and the scepter comes and the crown comes you are king 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 kings declare by speaking kings rewrite things he said my heart is indicting a good matter yeah i speak of excellent things that my tongue is the pen of a ready writer i can rewrite possibilities in my life and in the lives of others ruach elohim ruach elohim ruach elohim Shabala soda bana.
overcame hallelujah he won the victory hallelujah i overcame you are in the next one minute i like you to begin to pray seriously in the spirit go ahead and begin to generate energy in your spirit man in the name of Jesus, overcome us by the blood of the Lamb. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. The evil that comes when doors open, the evil that comes when mantles come, the evil that comes when increase comes. Someone pray. Hallelujah. Just two prayer points and we're done for tonight. I'd like you to begin to invoke the mercy of God across every aspect of your life that it seems the devil is taking advantage of. Oh, by the mercy of God, the Lord rebuke you. I call forth the mercy of God. Someone go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Invoke the mercy of God. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, the precious blood. I plead the blood, the blood, eternal saving blood. I don't have to cry. Ah. Rise. Yes, I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, the precious blood. I plead the blood, the blood, eternal saving blood. I don't. Open 
your mouth and declare Satan the Lord rebuke you I come by the authority of the king and priest in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord rebuke you I invoke the power of Elohim I rebuke you over my life over my health someone pray the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. The covenant of the God of David fights you. In the name of Jesus, I call upon the holder of the key of David that opens a door that no man can shut and shut a door that no man can open. He has opened the door. No man can shut it. Go ahead and declare. He has opened the door. No man can shut it. Speak over your ministry. Speak over your family. Satan, thus far have you come. No further shall you go. The Lord is against you. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is against you. gentlemen please hear me please hear me listen listen many of you will run sometimes this year and come and listen to this message again because the prophecy for open doors is not complete until there is a training to know how to become a person of stature you need the door to remain open for those behind you to come. There are giants on every mountain. That is why you are a warrior. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the race. You are not only a runner. When you are in the field, dress like an athlete. But you are in the battleground. Don't wear athletic clothes. You have to carry the regalia of a warrior. You are both a warrior. You are an athlete and you are a keeper hallelujah hear me for many of you under the sound of my voice here tonight and falling across the globe the Spirit of God is depending on your consistency for the liberty of many people any laxity in your pursuit will not only cost you alone the realm of the Spirit taught you to be your grandfather he started on a good note, but eventually laxity and frustration. There was zeal, but no accurate knowledge of the precepts of the Spirit. So he could not survive the viciousness. Then it came to your father. Some of them did their best as far as they could go. Now the baton has come upon you. You may be young, you may be the last, but by no means the least. The mantle is still on you. God is counting on you right now. Will you be the one to end this cycle and start a new one? He said, are you the one or should we look for another? Are you the one who has come now? Are you the prophet we have been waiting for? Or should we look for another? Are you the apostle that our grandfather prophesied that a day will come in this city, a young man will arise with fire and power? Are you the one or should we expect another? who is yet to come 
Are you the businessman that prophecy has come upon that you will be the one through your resources to liberate nations? Hear me. The Bible says there remaineth a rest for the people of God. Any day your faith selects is the day you make your rest. It says let us therefore labor to enter that rest. And the way we labor is found in Jeremiah 6.16. It says to stand in the way. And then he says to see and ask for the old path wherein is a good way. When you find it, he said walk in it and for sure you will enter your Sabbath. Please hear me as we prepare to round up tonight the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to someone I am still depending on you I am still depending on you I am still depending on you Moses do not prolong prophecy by 30 more years because of the laxity in your training when the prophecy came to Abraham it was 400 years match the prophecy with the speed of your training so that you do not add 30 more years and make god look like a liar if you are slow you will delay prophecy and time will be added and men will suffer you must be up and doing at a cutting edge to match up with what has said he said i daniel understood by books he opened the book to see where it was written that the captivity of israel in babylon would come and when he found the time he postured himself in fasting and prayer for 21 days until gabriel was sent from heaven to come and bring him word and while he was coming the prince of persia the spiritual wickedness that resides in the heavenlies he stopped him and he maintained in persistence and archangel michael he came and it prevailed not and he had now come he said i am come to give you understanding he gave him understanding and he knew the times that the captivity of god's people would come to an end In this season, we must master the art of reading the writings on the wall. You must have the eyes of the Spirit that when you see things written on the wall, you must discern what the Spirit is saying. The Bible says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. Is it not in your Bible that the Spirit speaketh expressly? The Spirit speaketh expressly. It says that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and they shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons but the most important thing is that the spirit speaketh expressly we must obtain grace that our eyes be washed with eyes of and that our ears be attuned to the frequency of the spirit to know what god is saying per time per season let us walk after the order of the sons of Issachar the Bible says they are men that had an understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to do as a result their brethren were at their command there are names there are titles there are legends and tales of strength but only a Shua will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no way. There are names, there are names, there are titles, there are legends and tales of strength. I stand by this prophetic and apostolic mantle and I declare over your life in the name of the resurrected Christ who gave gifts to men that every door that has stood closed over you in the name of Jesus I come by the rod of a higher priesthood and I speak to that door Ephata be open Ephata be open Ephata be open in the name of Jesus it says and thou O Lord will teach my hands to war and my fingers to fight i decree and declare in the name of jesus the strategy for victory that you have now received 
obtain it and last through your open doors. Last through your open doors. Last through your open doors. No decline, no retrogression. In the name of Jesus Christ. You hear me? There are some of you that found certain treasures, but they fell and they were missing. The Bible says the kingdom is like a man who had treasure, but one fell. The first thing he did was to light a candle. And the second thing he did was to get a broom. And with the candle and the broom, he started searching. I know it is somewhere, I don't know exactly, but with the candle that has been lit and the broom, he started sweeping. The Bible says that is the character of the kingdom. You never find things until by light and the assistance of the prophetic. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. He said, where fell it? And he said, here, yeah. I want to speak to someone. Because you see, let me tell you, restoration resides within the office of the prophetic. Whether it is the wife of the Shunam a Shunamite woman having her son back to life, or the axe head falling, or restoration to Samaria. It is by a prophet that the Lord brings the nation of Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet they are preserved. He said, I have spoken to you in similitudes. I have multiplied visions even by the prophets. I decree and declare in the name that is above all names, everything that has left you but not by God, in the name that is above all names, I declare with accuracy and precision, let it return back to you. Let it return back to you opportunities graces let it return back to you by the power of the holy spirit hallelujah progress first in our spiritual lives and then it extends to every aspect of our lives we rise in this kingdom by and through our access to light it takes more than desire to rise we must access high level spiritual illumination hallelujah so let's look at a few scriptures and then see how God will help us in this service. And for those who are following from across the globe, please connect with your heart. We're here at Ron Conference and we believe in the name of Jesus that as it happens here, so it will happen to you wherever you are in the name of Jesus. Psalm 18 and verse 29. Psalm 18 and verse 29. It says, For by thee, I have run through a troop and by my God I have leaped over a wall if you remove for by thee and you remove by my God this is how that statement to be read I have run through a troop I have leaped over a wall that will sound like a man's ability a man's excellency and here he tells us that if you ever see me run through a troop and you ever see me leap over a wall, make no mistakes about it. There is an agency that was outsourced beyond my ability. It says, for by thee, I have run through a troop. Many times in our world, we would not like to read the first three words because it is always very marketable to give a picture of invincibility and human power. It looks very, very disappointing when you express the semblance of weakness with respect to God's power. We usually would like to take credit behind the exploits that we do as humans. But here is a very wise man, not only telling you his exploits, but connecting the basis for it. For by thee, are we together already? I have run through a troop and by my God I have leaped over a wall. Second scripture please. First Samuel chapter 12 and verse 6. Prophet Samuel said something there very very interesting and powerful. And Samuel said unto the people, it is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron and that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. It is the Lord that advanced Moses. It is the Lord that advanced Moses. 
if you were to look at Moses and Aaron, you would simply see a prophet who kept moving from one level of grace, one level of achievement to the other. And here is the prophet saying, behind the fearful exploits of the man Moses and even Aaron, there was an invisible hand, the Lord himself, that advanced Moses and Aaron. A scripture that has become a personal anthem in my life is 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5. It's a scripture that has ministered very deeply through the years. It says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves. Very profound admission to think anything as of ourselves. But it says straight up that our sufficiency, you know what sufficiency is? The capacity to rise up to the occasion, never disappointing. When you are sufficient, it means you are always in order. When you are sufficient, it means there is no possibility for disappointment from your own end. And he says that capacity, that faculty to always live up to expectations. He said no man by himself, unassisted, possesses that ability to always meet up standards. He says, our sufficiency is of God. Let's read verse 6. He says, who has made us abled? He gave us an ability. He has made us abled ministers. Hallelujah. Now, in this kingdom, God designed this kingdom to function in a way that you will always meet points in your Christian experiences that would reveal to you how helpless or incapacitated you are. It was intentionally designed by God. It was a system to keep us in need of him as well as reveal our pride that happens after little results. Are we together now? So no matter how godless or no matter how sincere you are, eventually you will meet occasions in your life where you will be given the liberty even without god if you choose to stretch your creativity your intelligence your imagination and god will insist that by your imagination and your wisdom you are not able to solve that problem in that state you are left with two choices number one to break down in humility and admit that you are limited and from that standpoint of humility, you now approach the all-sufficient God because his strength does not come upon strength. When his strength comes and meets strength, it goes back. Until what you call strength is depleted, then you now see the value of his strength upon your weakness. When Paul cried to him because of the thorn in his flesh, he simply gave him this answer. My strength is sufficient in your weakness paul for as long as you believe that it was because you are a scribe for as long as you believe that it's in the vastness of your education my strength has no ministry in your life i can be patient even if it's for 10 years and leave you to exhaust everything that looks like god are we together there are many, many people today that the delay in their life is God waiting for them to exhaust what looks like strength. So that you do not confuse the person who gave you that result. Remember in Deuteronomy chapter 8, he began to warn them. He said, let it not be that when you have built houses, you have done this and that, that you will say, God does not take that kind of risk with men. The difference has to be clear that he's the one behind it. Are we together? That means the earlier a man comes to a point of admission that I am limited, you have designed your speed system. That your life will perpetually be pegged at the instance and at the level of your pride. Provided you do not see the need for the help of God. Are we, are we following now? Yes. Now, you do not have to be an evil person. You just have to be human. Hallelujah. It takes a lot for a natural man to come to a point where you see and admit 
that you are limited. It is not usual with men because from the world system, the applause you receive is to the degree to which they perceive you to be superhuman or invincible. When you watch programs, you see people who display talents and the ones who display unusual talents are usually awarded. So it is, it is not human to admit weakness. There has to be a process that you pass through with God that brings you to a point where you acknowledge that our sufficiency is not of ourselves. Are we still together now? Yes. Jesus, knowing this about men, set that example with himself. Can you imagine that the God of the heavens, the God of creation, when he stripped himself and came as a little baby, at age 30, Jesus himself refused to start ministry or to start any exploit for that matter, even though he was born the word. But he was not born a man. But the moment he became a man, he knew that the weaknesses in all men was also in him. The Bible says he was in every way tempted. Is that in your Bible? Yes. And so, immediately without waste of time, he went straight to embrace the ministry of the Spirit. You would read the Bible and see how Jesus declared helplessness about himself as though he forgot he were God. I can of my own self do nothing. Realize who is speaking, the word incarnate. How could you make such a statement that almost sounds like blasphemy, that I can of my own haven't told them before your Abraham, before your father Abraham was, I am. Now you are saying, I can off my own do nothing. Hallelujah. And he embraced the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And that opened him to an incredible and an invincible life. He brought dimensions of kingdom reality that many of the people only read in scripture. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to wonder. Then they started bringing all kinds of descriptions to explain what they were seeing. For instance, in one incident, they said, this man is Beelzebub. He has to use the prince of demons because it is not human. How would you speak and then demons just leave? They didn't see that kind of thing. You had to stone the one possessed together with the demons to die, two of them. You destroy the body, then the demon looks for another body. Here is a man who can separate with surgical precision the problem from the victim and preserve the victim while the problem goes away. And they said, no, this is not by human strength. Hallelujah. When they heard him speak, even in the synagogue, he displayed a level of wisdom. They wondered, what sort of wisdom is this? And now Jesus got to a point with the disciples. At this point, the disciples were confused. They were perplexed, wondering, what kind of man are you? We grew up with you knowing your earthly father and your mother, but you are displaying possibilities that are beyond the realm and the scope of human intelligence. Now he begins to introduce them to this personality called the Holy Spirit. Are we together now? Notice that Jesus was not in a hurry to talk to them about the Holy Spirit. When he started his mentorship session with them, you would think the first topic he should go to was the topic of the Spirit. He began with what we call the Beatitudes, teaching them on the realities of the kingdom, bringing to their awareness a new culture. I always wondered why he delayed on the subject of the Holy Spirit. Notice that the teaching coincided with their frustrations. They were angry and started asking themselves, look, we left all to follow you. What is in this? The more they acknowledged their weaknesses, they were pushing him to that subject. Are we together now? Finally, they get to the subject of the Holy Spirit. Then he begins to talk to them about this paraclet. This one whom they could not see, but he credited his exploits, even as the word incarnate to the Spirit. He began to use names like comforter. He began to use names like the spirit of truth. He began to use names like helper. Now at that point they did not understand. Are we together now? When we get to John 16, that should be John 16, give us verse 12. He says, I have many things to say unto you. Jesus himself. 
Jesus did not hide his frustration even in mentoring the disciples because they were carnally minded. And the Bible says that a carnal man, a natural man cannot receive of spiritual things. He said, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. 13, he says, how be it? In other words, find comfort. When he, the spirit of truth is come, he says he will guide you into how many? All truth. All truth. The God that knows all truth must be fearful. He will guide you into all truth. Then he says, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and then he will show you things to come. The disciples thought they understood what Jesus said. Quite honestly, they did not understand what Jesus said, because if you really understand, if, if, if you understood what Jesus said, there are some questions that should follow. They didn't ask it, meaning they were not interested. All they were interested in was the restoration of the kingdom of Israel where there would be a king and they would get their rewards for living fishing and following Jesus. That was all their concern. They didn't follow him just because of love. Here was someone who had proposed a more superior life and they hoped that with his invincible power he would dethrone Herod one day and be king. Then they would be members of his cabinet. That was the whole journey of their discipleship. There was nothing eternal or souls. That was none of their business. That was why when Jesus died, they were angry. When he said he was leaving, they said, where are you going to? We left our wives. We left fishing. You have troubled the Roman government and you are leaving. It was not compassion. It was anger. They said, you are not going anywhere. You fermented trouble all over Rome. Now you want to leave. Peter said, you are not going. It is the reason why when they finally caught Jesus, their hopes were dashed. This man who raised the dead, so there is weakness in you. Judas was so confident about his power, he could even make money from him. Because he, he could make money because he knew that if they came to catch Jesus, he would make a mess of them. That was why Judas could not even use the money. These guys had so trusted the invincibility of Jesus, they started inventing skills to cash out of that power. Now, follow me closely, please. Are we together now? Now Jesus gives himself to die. And all of them are amazed. Peter is disappointed. The disciples run away. Then he leaves to die. And Peter in his frustration goes back to fishing. I wasted three and a half years of my life following someone who proposed a more superior way of living. Let me not make a fool of myself. And the Bible says in John chapter 21 that Peter said, I go a fishing and the disciples say, we go with you. In other words, look, this is over. Let's just be on our way going. Suddenly, while they were at the seashore, laboring for nothing. Because you see, there are times, you may have heard me say, when your net is correct. There are times when your location is correct, the sea. There are times when your skill is correct, yet you will still not catch fish. I do not see anything wrong as far as producing results is concerned. Peter was a skilled fisherman. His nets were the right tools. The boat was there. The sea was the right place, yet there was no catch. Now, that was, it was at that point that Jesus showed up. And he looks at them and says, little children, have you any catch? And Peter wondering, who is this man? Notice, every time Jesus saw insufficiency, he quickly rushed to explain something. There is something with the dealings of God with men that the weakness of men attracts God so much to them because it is, is a vocal expression of the need for his ministry in their lives. Are we together now? Every, in the healing of Jesus... Anytime people express weakness and limitation, he, he responded to them immediately, including blind Bartimaeus, thou son of David. I don't know what is the formula for getting your attention, but please, by all means, I just know you are the son of David. Have mercy on me. The woman with the issue of blood. Every time Jesus saw people 
declaring their weakness and their need for him or for God, he responded. This is a very powerful secret. I know why I'm telling you this because there are so many people who wonder why the Holy Ghost cannot do much in them. Because you are approaching God from a standpoint of strength and sufficiency. And the Holy Spirit is so gentle that your pride is a voice that can drive him. It is true. It is the reason why in using men, he will usually use very weak men. Ordinary men that do not have the comeliness that you may think should be desired. So that the excellency of power, you can see the difference between the man and the man anointed. Are we together? Yeah. So Jesus began to talk to them about the Holy Spirit. And then... He spoke very profoundly when they received the Holy Ghost. They began to understand the things that he said. Then we get to the Pauline epistle. This strange man who now had an encounter with the Spirit. And he made a very profound statement. Romans 8.26. I hope and pray that we are following. Romans 8.26. Let's read together if you can see it. Ready? One to read. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Please stop. The Bible says that same Spirit, that there are many things that he does in the life of the believer. And among them, Paul is teaching them by revelation that the Holy Spirit can help our infirmity. The word infirmity there was not accurately translated because it would look like sickness. The word there should be limitation, not just bodily or um, maybe some kind of biological deformity. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our limitations. That every time a man is limited, spiritually, financially, organizationally, you are calling for the help and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But that rule number one, you must come to a point where you acknowledge your limitation. This is not, this is not some kind of demeaning who you are in Christ. It's a state of acceptance and admission that except God helps me. Now you understand the scripture. It is by thee that I run through a troop. It is by my God that I leap over a wall. He took out time to emphasize the basis for his results. Hallelujah. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night and says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. John chapter 3 from verse 1 and 2. He says, for no man can do these miracles and accept the Lord be with him. There are results that you cannot get alone except the Lord be with you. In fact, there are dimensions of results in this kingdom that implicate you immediately that you have done business with the realm of the spirit, whether diabolically or genuinely. But out of the assistance of the realm of the spirit, there are heights you cannot attain. It is not given unto men. Whether it is Janus and Jambers or Moses, turning a rod to a snake needs power. Whether it is by God or by magic, in either ways, there has to be a partnership with the realm of the spirit. Why am I saying this? Because there are people in this conference who this year you will command this very strange order of results in the name of Jesus Christ. That you will not only celebrate what God is doing in the life of your man of God and his dear wife, but that you will access a potent secret. By mid-year, when you look at your life, people will have to call you and say, tell me the truth. Is there anything you need to open up to me about? Because I do not understand the you of January and the you of now. What suddenly happened? When they looked at Saul, they said, when has Saul become a prophet? What happened to you? We knew when you left home helplessly, clueless. With no, if you were that much of a prophet, why did you have to look for a donkey for three days? That now you are returning with precision and even prophesying. Let me speak over someone in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God. I decree and declare by God who helps men and by the power that raised Christ from the dead, you will access superior help from the Spirit and begin to command results in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit. Behind the exploits of great men in the kingdom 
is the help and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Unassisted by the spirit of grace, you cannot produce results that is consistent with the might and the power of God. No man can do these things except God be with him. No man can do these things except God be with him. The Bible says, and the Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. The Lord walking with them, confirming the word following. You read from scripture and you read even through modern history. All of the men and women, especially within the church circle, who were mightily used by God in their generations, they were men and women, some uneducated, some weak, some came from backgrounds of all kinds of things. Regardless of those limitations, you listen to their story, the punchline in their story is when they encountered this spirit of God called the Holy Spirit. At that point, things began to shift in their lives. Ordinary women encountered the Spirit of God. And some of them, though naive, though uneducated, inexposed, he began to help them and they commanded levels of dominion and power that was global. Regardless the limitations that came with their generation. Let me tell you one truth. There is no describing how far the Spirit of God is able to take a man and to help a man. I am saying it to you today. If you ever see anybody that you admire, whether used by God in ministry like your man of God or in business, any dimension of kingdom exploit, provided it is revealing Jesus, the signature of the Spirit must be there. By this teaching, immediately God is telling someone, if you don't give up on your strength, you will only recycle last year, this year. Regardless what prophecy comes, by ignoring the Holy Spirit, you will abort the potency of the word. The Bible said the seed was the word, yet it still died because of the soil it came upon. Are we together now? Yes. I learned this very early. How helpless a man can be in ministry. Respectfully speaking, there are people in ministry struggling from pillar to post, trying all kinds of formulas in isolation to the ministry and the help of the Holy Spirit. And they find out that by the arm of the flesh shall no man prevail. The world is too busy, too selfish and too wicked for people to dedicate their attention to you. It takes a force that is not human to coordinate people to look at you, know you love, no, no. Except you do not, you've not lived long enough in this world. What will make a man wake up from his house and think about you and call you and say for the rest of your life I want to bless you. That man who wants to bless you has relatives who are in need. It does not just happen. Listen to me very carefully. You are a man of God just because you are sincere and a person of character. It's not enough to make people leave their homes to come and to submit, to sit down, to listen and to learn. No, no, no. How about resources? It is one thing to have your skill like Peter and you will be at the sea and yet you will not catch fish. At that point, you don't need fishing again. You need a superior dimension of help. It is not because you are in Abia. It is simply because there is a dimension of grace and help that you have not accessed. This is my assignment tonight to introduce you to take away struggling and weariness and bring us to a point where you are empowered by a dimension of sufficiency that you will walk out of this meeting tonight rejoicing knowing that every prophetic word that came from the man of God to you was spoken because he expected that in receiving it you will honor the ministry of the Holy Spirit to make it come to pass. If Jesus, the son of the living God, did not ignore the ministry of the Holy Spirit, as the word incarnate, he made himself so helpless, the Bible even said, of no reputation. And he would speak again and again by the Spirit. The Spirit was behind the mighty things that Jesus did. A carpenter's son who became the savior of the world. In fact, the Bible even says, if that same Spirit that raised him, raised him, that body was lying down there and the spirit of grace came, raised him back to life again. 
Hallelujah. Yeah. We have ignored the ministry of the Holy Spirit largely and even those who talk about the Holy Spirit only focus on his power. And they do not even care about a relationship to understand the dynamics of his help. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, the most classic scripture that talks about the coming of the Holy Spirit. This was a statement by Jesus himself. He said, but you shall receive power after. Somebody say power after. The sequence matters. Power after. Power is only relevant when it comes after. Not power before, not power during, power after the Holy Ghost. Power after the Holy Ghost. Power after the Holy Ghost. Wisdom after the Holy Ghost. Miracles after the Holy Ghost. He must precede them all and he must be greater than them all. But here is what we do. Power through or by the Holy Ghost. We are not interested in the relationship. I hear you hold power to heal the sick, to open up doors, to bring finances. Can you borrow me that power so I can shine while you stand? I don't need you. I just know that something about you can make me powerful. But follow the protocol. Power after. Power after. Check this against your, the, your Christian pursuit. If your power, your quest for power is before the ministry of the Holy Ghost, you are already at the corridors of compromise. <clears throat> when God calls you, he does not give you power. When he calls you, he gives you himself. He said, come, follow me, not follow it. Follow me. When God calls you, he does not even give you an assignment. Your calling is to God. Your mission is now to the world. When he calls people, he does not call them to do things. He calls them to follow him. Follow me and I will make you. When I make you, I now send you. The empowerment is at the point of being sent, not being called. You see, when he calls you, you don't need power. You need humility to learn. When he sends you, he now sends you with power. Most of us have been called, but we have not been sent. And the reason is you will know you have not been sent because the power that backs up your being sent has not been given. But the itch to go it is true that your calling is genuine, but have you been sent? He said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? The plethora of lack and insufficiency is proof that the door has not been opened for you. That means you should stay, follow me, not follow it. I don't know if God is speaking to someone. He's saying many things to many of us. For some of us, God is saying, mark time with this ministry thing and get back to the secret place. The truth is that the power that follows the assignment has not yet come. You cannot hide, you cannot hide power. It's like pregnancy. A woman who is nine months and is not aware, will she look normal? Even if she does not know what is wrong, she cannot be normal. Not at nine months. Such as I have. My point is, when did he know he had it? Because once upon a time, he did not have it. And he knew he didn't have it. Now he has the boldness to say, Mister, I know what I have and I, don't, I know what I do not have. I'm still learning about prosperity. Silver and gold I do not have. I'm still learning. I can't, I can't guarantee on that. But this one, I have it already. Are we together now? The Holy Spirit. The Spirit helpeth our infirmities. Let me just show you quickly and then we pray. Three ways the Holy Spirit helps men to become mighty and to advance. You call it a run conference. I hope you know what progress is. Please look up. Progress means your next step must always be greater than your first step. Your initial one. If your next step is at the same level with the former one it is not called progress it is called maintenance listen watch this if i move this way there is motion but this cannot be called progress for it to be called progress my next step must be beyond the former one the next one must be so if you say i should come if you say i should run and i do this am i running the next step has to be is that true? 
that means your least month this year should be January if any month by any means becomes greater than January in result and impact you have compromised on the definition of progress for the path of the just is that still in your Bible is as a shining light that shined more and more I like the word more and more more and more it says unto the perfect day so let's deal with this in a few minutes that we have is God helping us the help of the spirit the secret behind the sufficiency of ordinary men the principal factor that is responsible for the mysterious rising and the results that ordinary men command as far as the revelation of Jesus is concerned in their world now you know by now that when I talk about producing results it is with respect to the revelation of Jesus and bringing him glory when we teach from a kingdom perspective we don't just teach from a standpoint of an ambition and mundane desire to make things happen our entire pursuit the moment we talk about result it is with respect to the revelation of Jesus you remove that out of the equation your pursuit does not have any value what gives value to prosperity anointing ministry is that in that activity Jesus is revealed and Jesus is glorified is that true yes it's called the reflection principle in John 17 and verse 1 Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and prayed a prayer and says father the hour is come glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee so how is this the father glorified when he glorifies the son are we together number one How does the Holy Spirit help the believer to rise, to excel, to command results in this kingdom? Number one, by revealing the mind or the will of God. The first dimension of the help of the Spirit to the believer is the revelation of the mind or the will of God. This is very, very important. Two scriptures very quickly. Romans chapter 8, please, and verse 27. Romans 8 27 the Bible says and he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God please someone shout it say the will of God, will of God. one more time say the will, of God. the will of God now the way God designed the administration of spiritual power please look up the administration of spiritual power and even the ministry of the Holy Spirit is that everything revolves around the will of God. Are we together now? The assignment of the power of God is to bring you into the will of God or to keep you in the will of God. Outside of the will of God, the power of God has no assignment. Listen very carefully. One of the ways you attract the power of God is staying in the will of God. If you are out of the will of God and he brings his power called his mercy, the assignment of that dimension of his power is to bring you into the will of God. Is that true? So it's important as a rule of thumb, the entire circumference of the believer's life must revolve around and within the will of God. If and when you are in the will of God, the power of God keeps you and you... you once you are in the will of God, that is where your immunity is established. Once you are in the will of God, that is when your relevance, the moment you are outside of the will of God, you are outside of the region where you make yourself a prey to Satan. Are we together now? Provided the prodigal son was in the house, there was nothing that could happen to him. No lack, no insufficiency. The moment he went out of the house and out of the covering of his father, depletion began until he got to a point where he fed with the swine notice that in his restoration all that he did was to return back home that was it that was all he did to return back home he said i will arise and i will go to my father and i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven i am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your slaves and he got up and did exactly what he said he would do He's returning back to the house. Celebration began immediately. Is someone learning? So when the Holy Spirit helps men, 
he reveals to us the will of God for our lives part time. Romans chapter 12, please. When you read from verse 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God that ye present or offer your bodies unto God a living sacrifice. He calls it holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable act of worship or service. Verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. Listen carefully now. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. So everything the Holy Ghost does through the word in your mind is to bring you and keep you in the will of God. Are we together? It is the assignment of the Holy Ghost to bring you into the will of God. Jesus himself found where it was written concerning him. Is that in your Bible? Luke chapter 4. He found where it was written concerning him and then he began to quote the scripture or to read it. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. When he was done, he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. He found where it was written concerning him. And the Bible says when the Holy Ghost comes, he will guide you in, in all truth including the will of God. There are many people today, listen carefully please, there are many people today who are farming like Elisha whereas their destiny is to be prophets over nations. It is the assignment of the Holy Spirit. There is no guessing the will of God. You don't even know it. There is no possibility of knowing it. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of the Father. The Bible said no man knows what is in the heart of a man except the spirit of that man. The moment you begin to pray in the spirit, I wish we had time to deal with this. Among the many things that happen is that you cooperate with the Holy Spirit to begin to search the archives in the mind of the Father. What is in the heart of the Father for you in 2023? It is a risk to start taking steps on assumption. You have to wait until the will comes. The trigger for your action is the knowledge of the will. As a man of God, don't assume that God wants you to expand. Don't assume that God wants you to start doing church. Don't assume that God wants you to organize a healing meeting. No, it is important that you walk your your confidence is knowing that you are in the will of God. In fact, Apostle John was teaching us on prayer and he said, this is the confidence that we have. Is that still in your Bible? That when we ask anything according to his will, we know that he heareth us. So I don't know that I'm hurt just because of the volume of what I'm saying or because of the time expended in prayer, as important as that is. My confidence is that I am, God is so determined to make us walk in his will that he created a system of capturing that will as scripture and still left it, still in addition with the Holy Spirit so that we are entire in his will. Someone say the will of God. Say it again. There are many of us right now, we need to go back and ask God. This movement have been moving around the circle. Today, I think I'm a man of God. Tomorrow, maybe a businessman. Next week, I, 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 it's like I had Zamfara. Then next week, it's like I had Potakot. You need to take away that, those haziness. Where Satan deceives believers is becoming like an angel of light. And that whole assignment is to make you sincerely veer out of the will of God. Satan does not necessarily need to fight you by attacking you. If he can take you out of the will of God, it was designed to destroy you by default. Is someone learning? It is the assignment of the Holy Ghost. You ask your man of God, how did he start his prayer platform? If you think it's just luck, do it. That's when you will see the difference between the will of God and the strength of a man. When it is the will of God, simple and even foolish things produce results that for your lifetime you cannot explain because the jealousy of God is behind it. God can speak to a man. I remember years ago, this was way before just, you know, social media was just at its infancy in Africa when God gave me a word. At that point, he told me, he said, do not, he was in the place of prayer. He said, carry your teachings, raw audio, not really very clear, the best of whatever we could do at that time. And he said, 
all you need to do this is my instruction this is what i want put it and make it available for people and my angel will take it to the nations of the earth that foolish instruction you see you can copy today and it will not work because it didn't come as a revelation of the will of god this is the danger of blindly copying things you can be inspired but be sure you are in the will of god moses said i'm not going to go and embarrass myself before pharaoh one verify you are the one sending me number two give me a sign i know who pharaoh is when he stood before pharaoh and said thus said the god of the hebrews let my people go you would think pharaoh say my god i'm sorry who is that god that i offended he laughed and he said you must be silly moses i think you've forgotten that this is egypt the center of wizardry so this is all you came to do to embarrass yourself here janus and jambers come and show him that if it is a rod he brought to become a snake go back and tell your god is not powerful enough and they turned it effortlessly you would think because the power of god were there automatically it should become the rod of um of of janus and jambers should not even become a serpent but it became a serpent right there to the point that you could not know which one is real or which one is fake but then god did something powerful the rod of moses swallowed the rod of of of, of pharaoh and did not increase in size and he held one and kept it the god of heaven listen to me our confidence in doing the things that we do is knowing that we have paid the price with the spirit to verify and re-verify that we are in the will of god when you are in the will of God, it does not matter who believes or who does not believe. The most important thing is that the jealousy of the one who sends you is behind and before you. For someone, God can speak to you and say, listen, people in Abia State are waiting. You are the next entrepreneur to rise. And while he's speaking, one of the ways you will know that God is speaking to you is because you cannot do what he's saying by your strength. If God tells you something you have the power to do, most likely he's not the one you heard. He will tell you what only him can do through you. If it is God that you hear what you heard should make you afraid. It should make you run back to him and say, so how do we make this happen? How do you look at an ordinary man, no one say, build an ark that will take all the animals? Three stories. He didn't say, are you an architect? He didn't say, have you tried building a small boat? That's God for you. God can look at someone you have never stood before any president and he will speak to you say the 12 presidents I'm sending you to make sure you preach Christ to them and while he's speaking you do not even have a passport God for you he will speak in a way that you must return back to him for the remaining details if it is not God listen one of the ways you know you are in the will of God is you will never hear everything the first time mm -mm. there are details he will hide and it is only your hunger that will take you. Hallelujah. The will of God. Let's finish up. Number two. How does the Holy Spirit help the saints to rise and to excel? The ministry of guidance. The Holy Spirit helps men. By guiding them number one is the revelation of the will of God number two is to guide you John 16 we read it earlier 12 and 13 13 says that when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth please look up this is powerful I wish I had time to explain this scripture for you that means even when you are standing in the truth you must be guided for it to profit you just because you are in proximity with the truth does not mean you will be blessed by it the truth can kill. Just because it is truth does not mean it will bless automatically. Truth is like a knife. You can hold a knife in a way that it will injure you. A knife that is supposed to cut the vegetable to make the food that we eat. Because you did not hold it well, it can still injure you. Women will tell you there are times that they did not hold the knife well. And they ended up injuring themselves. A beautiful tool that was supposed to help enhance your efficiency. When Satan tries to use a lie and it does not work, he will use the truth to kill you. Ask Jesus. 
When he came to Jesus, he said, turn this stone to bread. Jesus said, it is written. The next time Satan spoke, he said, it is written too. Since it is truth, let's use truth now. It is written. Sanctify them by your truth, he says. Thy word is truth. So it is not every time he will come looking like a wizard. There are times he will speak like a preacher and mislead you with relevant scriptures into derision. Just because it is truth does not mean it will bless you. The Holy Ghost. This is where many people who just embrace scripture and ignore the Holy Spirit. This is a piece of literature. This is a piece of archaeology. This is a piece of history. When you open it, it is a book. When the scrolls are unlocked, it becomes a word. This book you see must be both opened and unlocked. There are seals that close it. It is opened to the optical eyes, but not yet opened in the spirit. And it is dangerous to read the book when it is just open and not unlocked. Because you will find many coincidences. At the end of it, you will end up hating the Bible. Because it will look like a mix of nonsense. Written by people, arguments here and there. A lying spirit came from the Lord. What does that mean? Do not be over-righteous. What does that mean? Because all those things are unfruitful to the mind. If the only thing you do is to open the book. Only the spirit sustains the, the capacity. And you will see a scripture you've been reading forever. And you will stand in tears. There are times that you can carry one verse for days and you are sitting there and it's as if you found a gold mine and you are rejoicing over a scripture. You quote it and someone says, that's nice, you are learning scripture, but something in the name of Jesus, the miracle of open eyes, guided by the spirit, in the name of Jesus, may that begin to work in your life from tonight. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit guides men. There are various ways he guides. There is a difference between leading and guiding. Or there is a difference between direction and guidance. Let me tell you how to direct. Please look up. If I'm to direct you out of this auditorium, here's what I'm going to say. Move straight, turn right, and be on your way. That's direction. Guidance will say, follow this way. There is a step. Be careful. That step can hurt you. So just because you know the road, you do not know the contours, the very things. The Bible says the Holy Spirit guides. He does not just lead. He leads, but he guides. Many of you have been led. You need guidance. You are in the place of the will of God, but how to navigate the steps, now you do not know. He told you this man is the one who God will use to lift you. Now you are with him, but what do you do? Do you walk up to him and say, you have been wasting my time? God said you are the one who will live. You see, now direction is correct, but you need guidance. It's the Holy Spirit who will guide you and say, you know what? Um, take a meal and just go and give him and bless him and don't say anything. That's guidance. You now go there and say, oh, who is this? What do you do? I am so, 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 and so. Thank you. You are the kind of person we are looking for. See me tomorrow. Two of you can be led, but only one was guided. Most people have not opened up themselves to be guided by the Spirit. You can be in the right environment and still weary yourself. You need to pray, guide me, guide me, guide me. Spirit of the living God, guide me, guide me. For when he guides you, in addition to his leadership, there is no darkness for you. Eventually, it may not make sense while he's guiding you. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. It is like driving again. When you plot the map on your phone of a location, it tells you, okay, you'll get there in one hour, you see. But it doesn't just tell you the location. It keeps zooming and you, you keep finding out that it is helping you. Is that true? And there are times you go to a road and it is closed. It will reroute it again and show you how to still get there. Direction is not the problem. It was not your fault. Someone decided to put a barricade on what would have been the road. It takes guidance. It now reroutes and recalculates the time. Guidance. Let's finish up. 
The last way the Holy Spirit helps the believer to rise, to excel, to make impact and advancement for the kingdom is through the ministry of empowerment. The third dimension of his help is through empowerment. Hmm. This is powerful. He empowers us. It is true. And there are two dimensions to this empowerment. There is the empowerment within and there is the empowerment upon. This is where we'll pray. The empowerment within has the assignment to produce Christ-likeness, to produce growth and maturity. Every time you see spiritual immaturity, there is no stature and character in the believer. He has ignored the ministry of empowerment within. He said, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. When the Holy Spirit empowers you, regardless where you came from, regardless the natural traits and limitations that came with where you came from, he will grant you grace. There are times that you who should be angry and speak to anybody and say, when I'm angry, even God gives way. You see, all those kinds of stains, they, they fade away because there is an empowerment within. Most of us do not have that strength in the inner man. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, I like Amplified. It says, finally be strong in the Lord. Amplified says, draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him. There is an implication. If Christ dwells in you in truth, there must be an effulgence of the character of the kingdom. Is that true? I should know that Christ is at work in you because it should be difficult to find out whether you are an Igbo man or Yoruba or Hausa. I should even be at a loss trying to trace you to an earthly place because you have been so transformed. You almost do not carry any negative traits that is associated with your territory. I should be surprised when you tell me, can anything good come out of Nazareth? But he's walked upon me. Listen to me. It is not enough to just embrace the engracing, the anointing. The empowerment of the spirit starts from within. So you find out that he empowers you to kill some things. They just die like that. Anger, bitterness, all of these things. Your life changes. People who look at you and say, I used to know this person. But you are changed. Not by your ability. But by the ability of the spirit. The empowerment within produces Christ-likeness, produces growth and maturity, stamina within. Then, the empowerment upon. In fact, let's look at Ezekiel 36, 27. Let me just give that one scripture. My apologies for stretching the time. It says, and I will put my spirit within you. Say within you. Someone say within you. And cause you to walk in my status, it says, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Why? Because there is an empowerment within. Within. How do you love in such a wicked world? How do you show kindness in such a wicked world? You have to be empowered. Your feelings will betray you a thousand times. You will need an empowerment from within. Most people what you call the fruit of the spirit you see listen you can impart a gift to a handkerchief but you can't impart the fruit of the spirit to a handkerchief a gift can come on anything animate or inanimate but a fruit is proof of maturity there is no tree that has a fruit at infancy for every single gift he matched it with a corresponding fruit by the time the workings of the spirit is within you, let me tell you sincerely, you will truly become another man. That when people look at you, the only example they can tell is Jesus Christ. And it does not matter the background. It's a progressive work of the spirit, but that it is sponsored by the empowerment of the spirit. And so you can love even when it, is, it does not seem possible to love. You can give you can be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity. Are we together? You who would not even help children before. Now something has happened to you, you are changed. 
Let me tell you the truth. I submit to you that if you have walked with the Holy Spirit and it does not translate to potent conversion from within, either your experience is a lie or you have not maximized that ministry of empowerment within. Hallelujah. Because it does not seem marketable to embrace the power within. Nobody will most likely sow a seed for you for being very nice. If you, if you raise somebody from a wheelchair quickly, you can say, come and take this estate and go. But for being a person of solid character, the results usually take a long time before you see the benefits. So most people will not want to pursue that. It is easy to pursue the one that brings, has a lot of charismatism around it. But you see, in the realm of the spirit, let me tell you, the things that may not seem to matter in this realm, that is what measures stature in the spirit. Are we together? It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. There was a mindset, there was an understanding, the workings of the spirit, hanging on the cross, and yet looking at John, and looking at all these people same thing happened to the Matthias Philip uh, uh, when when Philip was uh, Stephen was about to be Matthias empowerment within and then now empowerment upon Micah 3 8 Micah 3 8 the spirit helpeth but truly I am full of power how by the spirit of the Lord. I am full of power. Power to do. Power to manifest. Power to go to the nations. Power to pray. Power to heal the sick. Power to redefine possibilities in the lives of people. No man was born automatically with power, ladies and gentlemen. Men and women, by blindly walking with this spirit of grace, they encounter tremendous levels of power. I can tell you with all humility, if you truly encounter the genuine power of the Holy Spirit, not a semblance of it, your life will never be the same. Not as a preacher, not as a businessman. You may have heard me say it. He said, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. He does not anoint cups. The cup only shows what is on your head. If your cup is empty, don't blame the cup. It is that there is nothing on your head. You anoint my head. It is not my head that shows it. My cup runneth over. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. We're going to pray now. Look at what the Bible says. This will be my parting scripture. I can do what an arrogant statement. How can a man stay in the world of men, Pastor Jerry, and dare to make such a statement? You can do all things. Do you know how many things are there to be done? I can do all things means I can go anywhere. I can see anybody. How dare you make such a statement? Where did you come from? Who is your father? What leverage did he give you? Yet the apostle will say, regardless what you bring before me, here is my verdict. I can do how many things? <laughs> now listen, listen, listen. You go and stand in front of the road in your city and shout this statement and see how many people will look at you and say i used to respect you thinking you are humble but i'm disappointed you can do all things how do you talk to a man who does not want to talk to you it's part of all things how do you raise the money to build something of a, a multi-billion project with integrity how do you lay hands on someone who has been sick for 25 years? Stage 4 cancer. I can do all things. Please hear me. Run conference. I came to release a grace on you tonight. Please listen. Please listen. I want to show you a mystery. And then we'll pray. I can do all things. Who makes such a statement? 
in our world today did you not know what happened during covid you can do all things are you the one who keeps your life paul would say i can do all things if he stopped there we would have edited that statement and charged him for foolishness immaturity pride and the manifestation of the flesh if paul stopped there with those five words we would even legitimately edit that and strike it and say in learning paul learn other aspects but when you get here jump it but here is my message tonight leave the first five read the remaining one to read through christ one more time now read the first five then finish it with the first five are you ready one two read you didn't get it right through christ which strengthened me i can do all things so he tells you if you see me moving from nation to nation be careful while you clap explain there is an agency when you see that i can do all things it is not because i am sufficient in myself i have found a secret in the spirit that the christ can strengthen a man that christ can strengthen a business can strengthen a man of god and not nary man you can dare to say regardless the causes regardless the limitations within my city regardless what they think can come out or cannot come out of me that here is my verdict on the strength of this revelation i can do all things not some things to say some things will be limiting the power that backs me through christ through christ which strengthened me so when you hear the testimonies that happen through the prayer platforms when you see the mighty things that god is doing through your ministry thank god for the man but make sure you look well see the olive trees too make sure you look well and see that beyond ordinary men is a mighty god that stands behind them no man can just make progress men do not rise just by willpower hear me it takes more than willpower it takes more than determination every factor fails when the holy ghost is not there value fails when he's not there knowledge fails when he's not there skill will be barren and impotent when he's not there i can do all things i can do all things you may be ordinary my precious brother my precious sister you may be ordinary watching from across the globe wondering can anything good come out of my life i introduce you to the minister of the helper the paraclete he is not a politician he is not a king he is not an elected person the spirit of the living god who helps ordinary men to command tremendous levels of power can i tell you never laugh at a man who has submitted to the ministry and the help of the holy spirit you will bury your head in shame for the rest of your life many of you will prefer running around looking for men and women of influence who can help you directly and yet ignore the greatest helper did the bible not say except the lord builds a house it says they labor in vain he never said they labor they will not labor but it is in vain that build it that except the lord watches the city 
the watchman watched but in vain the bible says that it is vain to wake up early in the morning nigerians hear me and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow only god can give men rest man of god respectfully speaking please hear me there is a fountain that is greater than your limitation my uncle promised to give me money to build a church is a recipe for frustration when i sense you lackest thou anything the helper we stand today by the privilege of god's grace as ordinary men who have been helped by god he signed his signature upon our lives that the nation may lend the spirit again that when an ordinary man unite with an extraordinary god the destiny becomes extraordinary so he says there is this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of power man of god hear me do not give up on your call and don't try to look for fame and try to move around saying invite me leave all that nonsense and stay with the holy spirit stay with the holy spirit you're a music artist. Don't jump from pillar to post saying, stay with the Holy Spirit. The greatest way to make yourself known is to make him known. Stay with the Spirit of God. In the place of prayer, in the place of fellowship, in the place of building. You see, let me warn you. Let me warn you. Walking with the Holy Spirit is usually not profitable when you start. So I warn you so that Satan, who is the master of the flesh, does not beguile you into naming your submission to him a waste of your time. If it is God you are walking with, you will be a fool for a very long time before the wisdom behind his dealings with you is revealed. So I'm giving you a word of caution. <laughs> Jesus was born of the spirit, but it took him 30 years. Of living supposedly an aimless life but at 30 when he came in power in three and a half years he wrote something that cannot be erased forever when you walk with the Holy Spirit let me tell you the truth there is a side effect because you will have to give up on your will many times and that will put you in a position of perpetual insecurity in the flesh I don't know the name of where I'm going but I trust you who is leading me and like a baby who is walking even in the midst of your confusion one step after another while people laugh at you you keep following at a time you will ask yourself god where are we going what are you doing with my life but i can leave you with an assurance if it is the god of the bible leading you the day he presents you to your wall like a trophy he will sign upon your life and it will become clear to all men that the god of the universe has shown you help Let's pray. The one you helped has come to worship you. The one you helped has come to worship you. You are helped. You're my help. You're my help. The one you've helped has come to worship you. The one you've helped. I want you to pray a sincere prayer Lord I lean not on my own understanding I submit to the help of the Spirit someone open your mouth and pray I submit to the help of the Holy Spirit Spirit of the Living God come and help me in ministry come and help my family come and help my life I'm tired of wallowing around in pride I give up 
I have guessed my own formula and done everything I know to do. It's only left me in pain. I submit to you, Spirit of the Living God, Maranatha. Come, come, come. Someone pray just for a minute from the depth of your heart. This is a mighty church of prayer. Help, oh God. I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. He said, From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. hallelujah let me stand in faith with the grace that is upon this house and this altar and just speak over your life listen some of you may need to go back and listen to this teaching again and cry before the Lord and say 2023 cannot be like 2022 again I've seen the difference I've seen how I walk by my own strength now I want the Holy Spirit to help me as a man of God you will preach and be tired you will do everything you do and be tired but when he comes Jesus said I have many things to tell you I have many things to show you hmm. but when he the spirit of truth is come he says he will guide you very simple formula yet very difficult this is the reason why we do not glory in the flesh as much as we thank God for all the human honor the applause that we receive and to him be all the glory but I tell you sincerely any man who knows the Holy Spirit is helplessly submissive to him because to live without him is like standing in shame you are programming shame to your life father in the name of Jesus I stand in partnership with the grace that is upon this house and I pray for someone maybe a man of God maybe a woman of God maybe a prophet maybe an apostle maybe a business person maybe a mother maybe a student maybe a politician or some head of parliament somewhere who is in need of potent results by the Spirit You've stretched yourself from pillar to post, from border to border. And now by this message, you have come to a point of acknowledgement that the missing factor in truth is the Holy Spirit. Maybe you have been pursuing power and you have ignored him. Remember what I taught you. You receive power after. That a relationship with him, embracing him as a, the helper who comes to help your limitation, is the key to an enviable life I pray for you the grace to hunger after this ministry of the Holy Spirit receive it right now in Jesus name some of you by this night you will return and the Spirit of God will begin to reveal things to you he will open the pages of your destiny and with precision he will begin to guide you as a result of that guidance some of you will need to make a hundred and eighty degrees you turn because the direction you are currently following has nothing to do with your destiny may grace be revealed released upon you to make that turn if the need arises hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. 
and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you